Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. You'll never have the sacred stone. <laughs> oh, this you crazy mother. He has a lot of problems. Struggle to be top five in points at the end of the season. Wow. You don't bleach your, your hair, you're, you're a sellout. Yo, what is up, everyone? Welcome back to the Moto Aftermath Show. This is episode 266, St. Louis Wrap-Up Show. We got a full studio today. All the boys are here. We are going to talk all sorts of stuff. We've spent the last 25 minutes <laughs> reminiscing with stories that cannot be shared on the air. Well, maybe some of them. We'll see. It's all on uh, camera. Some of them were pretty good, so, yeah. <laughs> so we'll see what we can make happen here. Uh, stay tuned at the end credits for maybe some... Very interesting. I mean, the J Law story could probably. The J Law story that. could probably. Not the J Lo story. <laughs> the, the J Lo and J Lo. <laughs> yeah. No, okay. don't do that. Anyway, presented um, by Goodwood. Yeah, presented by Goodwood. <laughs> they work, they watch this show. <laughs> yes, they do. Oh God. Anyway, uh, I'm your host Travis. Thank you all for tuning in here. Uh, like I said, we're gonna wrap up St. Louis. Uh, we have a full pack show here. So we have Gutterworks bringing you your 450 race recap. We have our complete racing solutions halftime report. I've got a Holster Co. Reload rant. I have a Pro Flow mini moment of the race. That's a new section, by the way. Nice. Both of I you like should it. take notes. Uh, oh, yeah. Just a mini moment there. Uh, we've got the 50 graphics 250 race recap. Uh, and we don't have an Isaac Nelson designs Deegan Danger Zone because Deegan's not racing. Well, this he will weekend. be racing in two weeks, though. In two weeks in Foxborough when we come back. But uh, uh, yeah, so those are all the sponsors. There are links in the description down below for all them, and we'll go through here as we uh, as we continue on the show. We're in the TLR Coding Studios right now. Uh, long work day me and Tom have had here, and it's probably not over yet because it's not over yet. It's Monday. It's Monday. <laughs> So, recording the show a little late. So, sorry, everybody, that's slightly behind schedule here, but it was a holiday yesterday, so everybody... I mean, really. It still comes out on Tuesday, so... And for those it that depends don't know, if I get it done oh, yeah, for that's tomorrow, true. That's true. which I probably won't. It's probably going to come out Wednesday, so... For those that don't know, Tom is actually in sync, by the way. Tom's going to have no idea what you're talking about. He has no idea? Okay. No. The guy in the comments that was like, yo, what's in sync oh, got going right. on? That's right. That's right. Yes. That so was your nickname. Yes. Yeah. 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 He was calling yes. you in sync or something. Right. Yes. So um, anyway, uh, yeah. So thanks for tuning in, everybody. Like I said, links for all the sponsors are in the description down below. Okay. We'll fire right off here with Cole's favorite section. Oh, I love this one. Wait, I inter- did you interview some everybody? Everybody knows who everybody is. We're Nobody the only knows people. Who I am for sure. That's you're in everybody you're in knows sync. who you are. Trust oh, yeah, me. You're famous. You're in sync. Trust me. <laughs> Uh, all right, we're firing off with opening ceremonies oh, here. Oh, I love opening ceremonies. Okay, go but ahead. I'm letting you guys go first. I don't have one, so I'm out. Oh, come on. Boo. Get out of here. I told you I'm not good at this. Get good at it. <laughs> get good. <laughs> get good at it. Get good. Get good. Get good. Uh, what are you going all right, with? Well, you know what? I got, I'm, Levi Kitchen's my guy on this one, but I got to give the credit to Cole because I'm the same thing as Travis. I'm really good with music, but I'm bad with song titles. And we'll just go, what is it? Migos Stir Fry. Because, you know, it's kitchen. In the kitchen, whipping up a stir. Yeah. You know, you know okay. that one? I definitely okay. didn't pick okay. that one. You know that one? Okay. All right. Yeah. All right. All right. All right. Let, it rip. Let, me, let me borrow this now uh, so I can join you. I'm going Eli Tomac, and I'm going a uh, little Chris Cornell Audio Slave Coat Cheese, which is uh, Apache. Oh, that's, that's... You got seven seconds. It's uh, a... <laughs> it's it's, so it's, it's based it's off of Apache, uh, Apache, uh, whatever, they, not the king, but whatever the hell they call the commander of the apaches yeah and now if you're eli tomac he's the, he's the apache commander so fucking let's go black hog down <laughs> <laughs> actual <laughs> indians though but all right oh my gosh <laughs> um definitely right, man, now. i got i got two oh, for opening uh, ceremony oh yeah, yeah, one, one this week. that's how much one, i love this segment let me guess one of them's aaron plessinger no nope, so pick AP. uh where's our next round foxborough all right so foxborough uh i'm jason anderson and I'm coming out to this new song that's out right now. It's called Like That with Metro Boomin and Kendrick Lamar. Doubt Ando's coming out to that song. Well, Gas Productions made a super badass edit to it. And that edit needs to be on the Jumbotron. And that song needs to be going. So, work's done. I wish uh, I actually wish a lot of these independent guys that are doing like edits and stuff would actually get a shot to do videos for guys. In they should someone. outsource that be like cool. that because it would be very easy for them to get good high quality 
actual things then as opposed to the shit we get right now because yep. there's I, I've not heard good. from many I've heard from many it's people terrible, opening ceremonies is not not as good. prime as it used to it be, used yeah. to be like I don't five I don't minutes no, per yeah, yeah. yeah. Awesome. and I don't think it's as prime as it used to be yeah either. and these guys are doing no, like really terrible. cool edits during the week and stuff yeah. and keep it fresh it's not the same every round like yeah, the like press APs. yeah like the people uh, well I guess people like us that go to multiple rounds mm-hmm. or like say the racer X guys editor every single race it's the same bullshit every yep. round. So, um, they used to be unique. It K-Dub. used to be. Oh, yeah, K-Dub I miss transfers. Yeah, I miss yeah. JS seven tossing a fat whip and then going, mm-hmm. you know, throwing the number one up about yep. shit in your pants. Chad Reed always had really cool videos too. Yeah, the the videos, the knack knacks, all the shit. But um, second song for opening ceremonies, we're going into Fox. We're going into Foxborough. Um, it's hey, embarrassing. A bit. The, his opening ceremony song. The man is Justin Barsha, and he's coming out to Here Comes the Boom, the Nelly remix version oh, by boy. P.O.D. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Yep. Yeah, good with it. Oh boy. Yep. That's all I got for that one. Oh, boy. <laughs> That'd be funny, though. That'd be funny. I'd laugh. I'd get a laugh out of it. I almost did a Justin Barsha one thinking that it was Nashville, and then when I figured out it wasn't Nashville, it was Foxborough. The week I, later. I changed it. week later. Nashville yeah. is the week later. Yep. All right. Well, that's been our opening ceremonies segment there. The people love it. The people... I think they do like it. Uh, I mean, I don't know about love it, but they like it. I mean, I've gotten some comments. Not a lot. So I won't say love. We'll More than like. usual. We'll go with like. Come with on. Like. Love's a strong word. We'll go with like. Just I like mean, two to, two to three comments on our new segment is more than what we had before the segment. There you go. <laughs> I suppose this is true. <laughs> yeah. problem is, is if I these segments keep getting true. popular, we're going to have to come up with new segments every time. And have a longer show. Shit. I don't know if we can have a fucking longer show. Hey, I more segments see. means more sponsors. Yeah. yeah. I want to see the, what the fans put in the comments. Give us some good suggestions. Don't just fucking hate on us. Like, you Anybody can do that. That's that's cheap. Oh, I like the hate too. I think it's give great. us give us some good input. Do you? What would you do? I do. I think it's great. The hate comments. However, are awesome. oh, there boy. have been some good comments. The one guy said, "Pay the man. We love him on the show." Of course, <laughs> you would like that one, jackass. Yep. Yep. Hey, hey, look, we got several comments that said I could do a Thursday night show, pay to play, and people would pay. I'm excited about yeah, that. Yeah, we did get some of that. Too. Yeah, we used the used p words in there a lot in that sentence. Pay to play. Pay to play. Pay. <laughs> Hey, whatever, man. Speaking of pay to play, anybody bet online and no? Did you do that? I thought about it. I was gonna go. um, Somebody asked. I I mean, somebody probably made some good money off Tomac winning, but yeah, yeah. um, Bet on that. Kitchen's odds were garbage, but Mm. it's only just winner odds right now, and like no podium stuff Mm. like that. Yeah, which is kind of lame. Once they bring the podium stuff in, it'll be good. Is this moto bookie or is this regular? uh... Real legit shit. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Except for the nine dollar convenience fee to put your money in it. Get the fuck out of here. Shocking. Credit, credit card fee. Shocking. No surprise there, though. Yep. All right. Uh, let's jump into this here, then. 450 Race Recap, brought to you by our friends at Gutterworks. Always well hung, just like Cameron McAdoo. Sackadoo. Sackadoo. Sackers. Sackers. And McAdoo's, I'm telling you, Stop. man. Stop. I can't. What a not. fucking unit. <sighs> Mac- McAdoo is working with some A-Kit. That That's hammer, what. dude. Just pounded nails. That thing is a fork tube. <laughs> That's All right. not even AK, bro. That's just work suspension. Okay. <sighs> no, it works for sure. I can give you guys three options to start with. Is Ooh. it, it Kashima coated? Okay. Yes, it's Kashima coated. Love it. Do you We're guys want to talk? Slick stiction. Oh, oh God. <laughs> Great. All right. Let's. Where All are right. we starting? You guys want to talk? Tomac winning. Are we going to talk about all this stuff eventually? Anyway. Yes. Okay. But I'm just giving you options oh, to where start. Where we want to start? Tomac oh. winning. Okay. Red Cross flags, <laughs> yeah. or Barsha's center punch. <laughs> let's go. Let's give. Let's let's talk about Eli. Give the man some credit. Okay. Let's talk about Eli. Well, Tomac goes one one one, kind of. Kind of. <laughs> let's Ish. say one. Let's go say one two one. So, Asterix. <laughs> so does that count as a sweep? The second sweep of history. Oh my so. god. Does know. it? It's the third. It's the third because he Kenny did it, did it or Kenny did it, and then Jet did it, and now. Oh okay. Let's, let's go. Tomac. It, let's, go count? let's go one two one. Let's just say one two one. No, no, no. I'm, I'm, say, yeah, no, I'm just reading the results. It says uh, one one one. I'm gonna say one two. Look, one. in in thirty years when we look back, we're we're That's not true. gonna remember the fucking. We're not gonna remember. Here, yeah. So true. it's gonna be it's gonna be man. Tomac swept. Okay, that's fine. I Tomac mean, swept. He no. brought his broom. Anybody watch the press conference? <laughs> nope. No, but I've heard, oh, I've, I've heard, heard about the I've heard the stuff. secret ankle, ankle injury. Yeah. yeah. Yep. I mean, why why did you just go like that? Why did you just go? Let me just go back to my holster coat reload rant last week. Can we just get a 
fucking injury oh, report. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, sorry. I, I interpreted that wrong. I thought that you, by doing this, usually when people do this, they, like, say bullshit. Uh, no, well, it's, well, it's supposedly it, legit. I mean, it came out of his mouth at the press conference. And also, I was about yeah, to but say... Why, why is it so far after the fact that it comes out? Like, hey, you're sucking dick. Everybody's calling you the old guy. I say, hey, I hurt my ankle. Because I don't think Boom, he, I don't think he lie. I don't think he lie. Makes excuses like that, man. That's one weird thing about this. Sport. It's not an excuse, though. I mean, I think to him though, he would think that people would perceive it that way. God, I feel weird being like the Eli Tomac guy these days. It's a really weird position for me to be in because I am not an Eli Tomac guy. Yeah, right. well, here give it about con- six years, he'll be the Jet guy. Hold on, hold <laughs> on. You, here will. come, here come, here come the. Man, that guy in the corner is a real Tomac Homer. <laughs> Everybody, dude, it is so weird. Everybody thinks that, but you can definitely tell that those are the new people because all you have to do is go back to 2021. I know. And you could watch I the know. show and like people would know that I am not a Tomac Homer. It's yeah, just one of those yeah, things yeah. that you have to appreciate the man. The internet's full of cynics, right? So oh, for sure. somebody can get, get the shit sure. on you, they're gonna. For sure. Look, Look, for me, like the sport part of it is interesting because for Moto... It's like top secret, right? But Which for like I play like for all who don't know who I am, I play minor pro hockey and you have to fucking disclose that. Even if it's just upper body injury, lower body injury, you have to at least disclose that uh including on the lineup sheet too. So like if I'm healthy scratched, you have to like it has to be shared throughout the, not even just the teams but the league too, right? Well, it's not like that for Moto at all. No, we yeah, are the- it, it'll be interesting to see if we do get an injury report or something like that with all this sports betting and stuff that's starting to come into the sport, where I think legally they're going to have to start reporting this stuff. Let's say we are the only professional sport that doesn't mandate you giving an update on your guy if you're being it. I mean, even Formula One, they make everybody like, well, I think it was last year. No, just recently. Carlos Sainz, they were at the second round in, I think it was Jeddah. And he had been struggling for, like, the whole entire week. They didn't know what it was. They thought it was just flu symptoms. This motherfucker goes out for qualifying, struggling, struggling, struggling. They couldn't figure it out, couldn't figure it out. Come to find out that his appendix was about to burst. Mm. And then they pulled him, and then they gave the Formula 2 kid, the reserve driver, Ali Behrman, a shot. But they were like, yeah. But they went into the weekend, though, going – and they didn't know what was wrong with him. But they still went into the weekend going – yeah, like Carlos has in like he has something going on with him. Like we don't know what it is, but he has something going on with him. And it was insignificant because they didn't even have like tests to prove anything was wrong with him, but they still had to let everybody know that something was wrong with him. Mm-hmm. Come to find out, luckily he went to the hospital when he did. Yeah, it was super sketchy. It's <laughs> hard it's, to tell. It's really hard to tell. It happened to Alex tell. Albon last year at, at, at um one of the Italian races at Faenza. Like he had his appendix like it burst. But the point is, is that they went into the weekend going, we don't know what's wrong with him, but we have to tell you that something is actually yeah. wrong with him. We're the only sport where it's not mandated to do that. Uh, yeah, there, there's stuff like that that's wrong with our sport. I mean, like, you can knock yourself silly in the first qualifying practice, not even know who you are, and you're allowed to race. So, or you mean like are Jordan? You or you mean like Jordan Smith? Like wads of shit and clearly those has guys a all know in how to cheat. Report. I'm going to ask you about that. Those guys all know yeah. how to cheat the concussion test. Like, I don't know because I've done a concussion test for for moto and for hockey now, and it's not that fucking easy to cheat it. Like you have a baseline. I don't you know, can. man. You, you, I've seen some easy. hits, and I've seen guys get up and still race. That should he watched Kev, he watched Kev do it. It's not easy to cheat it. In the middle of the race, but it's but it's easy or it's not easy to cheat it outside the race. In the middle of the race, it's easy. You okay? Yeah. Yeah. Duh. Why are you looking over that way? I yeah. Mean, I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna get well, my like, bike. It's like the whole McAdoo Yankee, thing. Yeah. Yeah. I know. Oh yeah, you're talking McAdoo, about McAdoo or how the hell was Zach Bell supposed to race all those years ago? Yeah. He was clearly. Oh, out. when he almost died. Yeah. yeah he brought, was clearly out. They brought they brought this up. Uh, somebody did somewhere. And they're like, it's literally going to take a catastrophe before it changes. And they're not. I feel re- like right now they don't have, they can't be fucking around with shit with everything they're dealing with. Mm-hmm. I mean, look at what they did last week. Jordan Smith should not have no. been on that track. No. Like, I don't give no. a shit if he just knocked the wind out of himself. He knocked it out of himself enough that it restricted oxygen to his brain for a second. And he was not in the right mind. He crashed three more times and he yanked on the track and didn't even look. So what? Is, so what happens? Style. What happens when he does that, and then takes that? They talked about this. I don't remember where I was listening to it. What happens when he does that, and he takes out kitchen? Then what? I don't disagree with you on this, but 
who the fuck is he, whoever the AMA guys that makes a call? Who the fuck are they to tell me that I'm not going to get back out and race? Because if, if for me, if I crash real hard most of the time, they're you know. the people that the lawyers come to see you and then they sue because of that, or they sue, or Kitchen's yeah. lawyers sue fuck them the because lawyers. their problem they is they got pull him off the track. That and everything what, in America is ruined by our lawyers. But that's but that's what's going to happen because it, it's a it's a. This is what what it turns into is a real safety. Like I agree Liability. with you because I did the same thing playing hockey, and there's many times I look back now and go, yeah, you're "Man, fine. when I smashed that dude and I saw birds, I probably had a concussion and should not have played the rest of the week." But we did. It was the '90s, whatever. So anyway, however, in today's day and age, and especially with the lawsuits we know are going on right now with the Alpine Stars Medical Unit and Feld, I don't know they're gonna sue Brian yeah, Moreau. Brian, Brian Moreau. Moreau. That is why when someone like Forkner crashes, they will not show it again until until they know he's okay, up, okay, etc. He's trying to come back. Like he's gonna yeah, race I by the end. Tell me the story. I don't even know about this. Brian Moreau. Do you remember Brian him? Moreau? He he came, a, he's from Europe. Hot top shoe. Kid. Yeah, made top it like French four or five laps in those first. French ruins it. <laughs> made oh, it. No. Well, he made it for four or five laps into the into the. Was that the TL, practice? What team yeah, was he on? The, the TLD TLD team. He's on the yeah. ground, Damn and the medics up. dragged him off the track, and now he's paralyzed mm. instead of stabilizing. Because they literally like dragged him. Uh oh. Yeah. Uh oh. Yeah. That's yeah. worst case. Yeah. Yep. So, and and that's what we're gonna get to with the concussion stuff too. And everybody's talked about it. Is it? It'll take a catastrophe, but it will take something literally like what Smith did last week, where he renders himself. Silly there, and then I got my reload ran. My jumps on the jumps anyway. on the track and literally causes someone to get hurt, and then things will change. Now, how do you police that? Who knows? Because how do you judge? How do you judge it? At, is it when you come off the bike? It, I mean, like, there's so many variables to this that it's tricky. But at some point, something like that's going to happen, especially the way we keep seeing things go. And then it's going to be like, okay, what do we do now? Yeah. I mean, I can't tell you how many times Kennard ra- what like ragged out himself into the ground. Yeah. He never should have been back on the bike. Yeah. It was very clear, but they were just like, hey, whatever. Well, yeah, I mean, well, it's, it's back Cameron, to Tomac though. It's Cameron <laughs> back, McAdoo back to too. The only reason the McAdoo thing didn't go any farther than it did is because he took out Chris Blows and not somebody on a factory team. Yeah. He takes out somebody on a factory team. We have a different rule in place mm-hmm. already. The thing is, for me, is two things. For me, like as a racer, I crash my fucking brains out all the time. Right, that's kind of my mo, but. <laughs> For the amount of times that I actually hit my head and rung my bell and I actually got concussed, it's like a tenth of the times. I crash and hit my head all the time, but the amount of times you actually get concussed is not very often. When you get up, you know what's going on, or you know that you don't know what's going on, right? Most racers, if you're not gonna, if you're like, oh, I'm kind of woozy, you're probably not gonna go fucking go back out there. But and you and me, you're gonna go back out there when you got tens of thousands of dollars you, on the line. You yeah. would, you and me also know this though that I mean. We can, I mean, I don't want to bring up depressing shit, but we also lost, you know, a very good person, Josh Lichtel, yep. with a concussion. And you I don't know. think it was a concussion that got him, though. I'm pretty sure he was. His, no, he had a lot of stuff going on, but he definitely had a concussion when he hit the ground because even Dave, like, the I don't huge, know, the, the, the story of like him coming down the short shoot and he's going like this and he can't hold his head up. And like Dave to this day, like, wishes he would have pulled him off the track. Yeah. I and I think that like made it worse. I'm not saying he that was what did it. We all yeah. know that's not what did it. But I think that that like definitely didn't help the situation of what happened later on that day. Naturally, right? Yeah. The other thing is, is I got to mention that I think this morning I saw Fly has an ad where they have sensors in their helmets now, and yes. it goes Bluetooth to your phone or whatever. Yes. Which soon will be the bar pad on these electric bikes, right? Well, yeah. the sensors. So like formula, we have, we already have the, S too, yeah, and it will monitoring send out. brainwaves. Hey, if no. you crash, it sends an allergic, uh, yeah. an emergency alert to mm-hmm. a family member, or loved one, oh, or something wow. like that. Yeah, if you're so out I, riding by I yourself. Like that. Yeah. It probably is going to be wonky and dumb for a while, but the theory behind it is cool for not only the racing and like keeping, I mean, like monitoring people that crash and like, like right now it's just gonna, hey they crash, but pretty soon it probably be where you can actually tell with analytics how hard they crash or what actually yeah. like torsion of it or whatever. But the other thing is, is when I grew up, I practiced more than anybody I know, and it's because I practiced in the back fucking pasture at the house alone every day. Mm-hmm. And when I was out there riding by myself every day. Most of the time, nobody would know if I went down. Yeah. Well, right. this is this part of it's cool. I like that. Although I wouldn't carry my phone with me, I didn't even have a phone back then. <laughs> well, you don't have to carry your phone though. It just it you it's synced in with your phone, I believe, right? Yeah, you don't have like to that. carry the phone. I don't know all. Right? I don't know all the specifics. I don't know if you have to. Have Either way, it's cool technology. Look into it, people. Maybe Fly will sponsor this show. Probably Maybe. not. <laughs> I never wrote, wrote Fly gear, get... but I love those guys in general. 
Max was that guy back in the day. Those yeah. guys are great. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, off topic, but a lot of interesting things going on at WPS right now, hmm. business wise. All right, back to Tomac winning. <laughs> okay, yeah. Uh, anyway, now anything? let's restart the 450 race recap. <laughs> yeah, great. Um, so let me ask you guys this. Yep. Is there an asterisk? Yeah. I mean, no, no not in my mind. Like, there shit happens. For the moto, that's it. Shit happens. Like that's all. That's all part of it. Like we can go. We can go through the history of a lot of people that have won races due to other things or unforeseen shit. And if you want to, if you want to say like, oh, you can this, put an asterisk, fine. This has as big, big of an big asterisk one. as most of Ryan Dungey's titles. Nah. Yep. Hundred percent. Outside of what was stupid. the one? What was the one year he was dominant? Twenty sixteen. Yep. That one. Does oh, it. The rest Travis of them brought a spoon today, didn't has he? Has an asterisk, <laughs> dude. I'm fine. Wait till we get down to. I mean, I, I mean, I've calmed down. <laughs> look, you, you still, you still, you still got to, you still got to. Okay, if you want to talk about what it happened, racing's to, racing. Yes. Okay. That's if you fine. Want, and if you want to talk but, about the second, the no, second no, no, main. No, no, nope. I want to talk about Eli Tomac winning and the asterisk next to it because I don't put an asterisk next to it. Like, the one moto I give an asterisk. He put. He put six seconds on him in two and a half fucking laps. How much more of an asterisk do you fucking want? Did you also, like, are listen, you serious did you also right now? listen to him talk after the main? He like, put six seconds on him in two and a half laps. Did you also listen laps. to him talk after the main, talking about he knew what he was doing wrong where Jet was pulling on him? Uh, uh, so how do you know he wasn't going to come into the third main and well, figure it then out? Why didn't he pull back within six seconds? I mean, because if I kind figure of, it out, I'm going to do it and fucking that's make easy. it uh, I, got, I, that's easier said I than will done. stand up on the other side here and kind of piggyback Justin over okay, here. Okay, go ahead. I'll fucking argue this all day. But Dude, this is, Eli this is, is the kind of guy that's going to go out there and he's going to learn what's going on and he's going to sit in the truck and Chase visualize Saxton it last year, and Houston. think about it. Has he been learning what's going on all year when he was... No, because he's been getting bad starts. He's been. That's the first time he's actually, I think, been with him for a lap, three laps to figure and it out. He did, dude. And, and that was instead of crazy pulling, to see because he hung with him. And then guess what? And I also it could still well, didn't fucking. And I, I, was, I think it, I think he was like, I'm gonna go back to the truck. I got another race because his and bike I'm is handling like it. shit. I go along with David Villeman. Like Villeman has been very vocal about this. Tomac's bike, that thing, and maybe it has something to do with his ankle injury, not having the base. Because obviously we all know Eli, very upper body dominant, a lot of energy through the front end, but you build your energy through your lower body. If he doesn't have that stability and that flexibility, it's going to hinder him. And I watched that, and we all know Jack, you know, the talent and the bike, he can get in and out, turn down, not as low as Cooper, but close. And I'm watching Eli. I know Eli has always kind of ridden like this, but lap, like Saturday seems super exaggerated. It's like the front end looks even softer. How much he had to go to the outside just to keep his momentum up, and we all know Eli's like a clutch destroyer, but when you can hear how hard he's dragging the clutch through the corners and in between the short shoots on the TV broadcast, like this is not like a Barsha thing where Barsha is just over rev. Like I could just hear every moment. Like I could turn my head away and I would know where Eli, like, oh yeah, that's Eli. Like he just said that, and yeah. I'm like, Eli's always do, done Can you that. do that again? No. <laughs> but come on, man. I just. I look at it and I go, that was a typical Eli moment. And even Eli's like, yeah, like, I don't know if I'm back or whatever. And everybody's going to say, well, you know, this doing that. Sec- like what happened with Jet? Fine. Yeah. Jet beat him second main. Like he didn't say otherwise. He didn't say, oh yeah, he got lucky this and that. But we don't know what would have happened in that third main. Would have Jet have beat him? Maybe. Would he have not? We don't know. We're but never going to. he gonna- fucking didn't, right? But he didn't. But he didn't. <laughs> and, and we'll get into the Red Cross thing too, because yeah, I have, we'll get I have into a that. I got, I got some opinions on that. But it's just. It's, it's getting to the point that it's just super annoying that every time Jet says something really, really good, we have to take away when somebody else does something good because Jet just, he won. Eli wrote great last night. That's the best I've seen him ride that, for that sure. Is, and and if is. this ankle thing is, is legit, if this ankle, yeah, he's not. He's but not Which Eli ankle was it? Was it the same ankle as the Achilles side? Or? That's a good question. That's a great question. Because if it is, yeah. that definitely makes that it even makes worse. That makes sense. Yeah. Danny like, said it affected his balance. Which- and it, yeah, and he's and he's let's let's not get it twisted, Eli. This is not the last. Was that an ankle pun? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> this is dude. I didn't even think about it as it came out of my mouth. Uh, this is not Eli of last year. Like even Eli at his best this year, like didn't has not even looked as good as he did last year. Yeah. So, yeah, fine. Jet beat him. Cool. That's what Jet has done all entire year. But you can't take it away from what Eli did because you still got to be there. If I if we're gonna put an asterisk next to every time somebody won a race because somebody else did something, then you know what. I'm giving my boy Stu 100 fucking wins because I could put an asterisk next to a bunch of people when Stu should have won, but because of unforeseen shit happened. It is what it is. Like, Yeah, I mean, I guess. It's a yeah, lot of Chad stu- Reed got an asterisk in uh, St. Louis back uh, when Pastrana yeah, won. A lot, of, yeah. a lot of Stu stuff was more self-inflicted than... 
Well, what wasn't self-inflicted outside of the medic thing, but also that was self-inflicted on Jet's part too. I'm not talking the medic thing. What are you talking about then? As to why Jet lost last night? How do you... Are you talking... You mean Saturday? Are you talking about the Barca thing too? And we'll get into that. Yeah, Saturday, whatever. Sorry. Okay. Wrong we'll get into that. I'll dissect that yeah. one. Okay, that's fine. Here's we'll the thing. We'll, we'll, we'll get into it, but I'm just saying like... I, I that mean, there is a big fucking thing. It well, wasn't his fault. Either way, boys... Eli Tomac won another he did. race. He did. And welcome back. Welcome back. Like we need the sport needed that. Hey, three I hope right here. he wins. What? Three. I hope oh, he yeah, wins right here. Denver. That's for Tomac right here. I want to see it. Poetic justice. Him winning Denver after what happened last year. Oh, I think it'd yeah. be great. It would. Well, okay. We can use the asterisk. He's got to win a real race, not a triple crown. Oh, oh god. Yeah, here we go. <laughs> Here we go. So, but no, that whatever. was you know take take Jed out of the equation. He was beating all the guys he needed to beat last year, kind of thing. Yeah. So, uh, Webb goes five six two for second. So, what's the over under on him actually knowing there was a triple crown series championship? Doesn't that he give won? two fucks. I didn't, and I thought he was surprised when he got this trophy. I don't. Yeah. I don't know. I, at least they got a legit trophy now. Yeah, the trophy was actually legit, not a Salvation Army trophy. I said, <laughs> oh, this, I said this Saturday night after in the race reaction of I wish they would make a bigger deal out of this, and I wish they would do this at three specific rounds. Yeah, yeah. Like do it at Detroit. Glendale, St. Louis, every they, year, they, they no matter to, they what. They used to. And then put some money behind it, dude. Like, if you oh, have yeah. a if you have a little series within a series, it doesn't have to be a lot, because you only got to do it for 450s. I, I would love to ask Coop, like, was there a bonus to your Triple no, Crown championship? No, first thing I thought about. Was yeah. one, I was you, wondering if there was a payout. Hang on, we'll fire off a DM. Do you remember Do you remember the first year they did it? When they, when they got up at the end of the, at the, end of the first Triple Crown set there, uh, the first year, and they were like, oh, you're Triple Crown champion, Eli Tomac, and he's like, what? Yeah, <laughs> and they handed do him the, that little trophy. It's it's like the thing when they do like their version of the manufacturers like standings. Like nobody. I wish that was a fucking real thing. This isn't too. this isn't Formula One, man. Like I like the direction we're headed. I like, I like it. it. I like it. But here's the thing: if they if they're follow because they're following that model of the open wheel world. NASCAR does it too, right? I don't know. Cole, did they do a manufacturer's shit? I don't even think so. I don't think so. But Formula One does. Here's the thing: if you're gonna follow that, and I don't, I I highly doubt it, but I might be wrong. Uh, if you're gonna do that. You need to pay out those teams or those manufacturers at the end of the year for being the best. Because if you're just saying, "Oh, you guys won," and then that's the end of it, uh, even you, though are you Instagram DMing? Yeah, DM ML and see if there's a payout for manufacturers. Guys. I was about to say they because the Formula One teams get out and they're never going to get this much money, but they get a fuck ton of money. Yeah, for oh, the yeah. man. So if you're if you're going to follow that, then cool. Like I'm cool with that. Mm. But if you're just doing it to be like, oh, your Kawasaki was the best, or oh, Honda was the best, I think that's more valuable than money. I really do. Ah, <sighs> man, I ask Ricky Johnson, ask Ricky Carmichael when they when they win, who's who's selling on the Monday? Yeah, I, I'm just if you're going to follow that that method, then you need to pay the you need to pay the teams. The manufacturers cup needs to be, and and they've started pushing it. Hopefully, they'll get better and better with it. I I have hopes because we are making strides and improvements but if you're going to push the manufacturer's cup then it needs to be pushed more than a little graphic at the end of the day of like oh yeah. well, here's the manufacturer's points it needs to be explained too yeah i mean i don't know with formula one because i don't watch enough race enough actual races like i watch the highlights mm. to know if they explain it every race as to how exactly uh, that's a bit easier too they explain it they, <laughs> because they don't... there's not two classes yeah. and stuff but they don't exp- they don't go into detail at the actual the broadcast, but when they do like their reactions and they yes. go through the weekend, their like weekend wrap up, they talk about all that shit because it's a big deal. Yeah, because like every weekend is a big deal because there's millions and millions, millions of dollars, dollars on the line yeah. for these teams. Like that's how those teams like how do you think Haas keeps going to the races? Yeah, because if they get like eight, they get like thirty five million dollars. Well, there you go. Is that true? <laughs> Yeah. Not for, not for eighth, but they like dude the like Red Bull and shit. They get like sixty seventy million dollars for being wow. top of manufacturer. Dude, Ferrari gets a what is it called a legacy oh, yeah, yeah. or whatever. They get like twenty million dollars a year because they've been in F one since the first since it started. So really? they get an automatic twenty million dollar right. like payout dude, you, every year. Back from to F1. the Moto stuff. Even the last place team gets like ten million. Yeah. Yeah, that's why that's why the manufacturers cup is like a big deal for them because it's it, almost a bigger yeah. deal than the individual drivers yeah. cup. Yeah. yeah, I just love that they and I think maybe it'll start changing and we need to celebrate guys getting top tens and top yeah. fives and so so yeah, my, every time you you don't win everybody's like oh what a terrible day it's like fuck you he's fifteenth in the, the in the world and yeah. did a pretty yeah. good job like 
Give me but it's break. it's mm-hmm. just the way our society. My is. thing is with the triple crown stuff is like if they were to do it at the same three rounds every year or whatever, and actually really promote it as a series within a series, I think it would be great because mm-hmm. like for guys like us who want to go to races but can't go to all of them, like okay, cool, we could set out to go really cover essentially those that that series mm-hmm. within the series you know and be it all three of those as opposed to just like oh well we'll go to this one and we'll go to this one and oh this one happens to be a triple crown like no just make it the same rounds every year make it a series within a series because they there's so many stipulations they have to have like the pits can't be too far away they want it in dome yeah, yeah, yeah. like all this stuff it's tricky as a mechanic and it's like okay great cool that's awesome then just pick three spots that we go to basically every year and that's it. And just know those and are the just triple know crowns? those are it. Because people will specifically go to those, and people will specifically go to other rounds. And they, yeah, they'll simple. specifically plan their trips because they know they're triple crowns. Yeah. I wish we had the same shit in outdoors, man, because like you go over to like the UK series, and they have like four different professional series within their series. And then that's why you have like all the, like, the Dutch Championship, the ADAC Championship. Like I wish that we had, instead of just Supercross, and then obviously Arena Cross is kind of coming back, and then outdoors, we had multiple series within series. Bro, I got a question. We could get into this in the halftime report because I got all sorts of stuff. Well, re- related to that real quick. So, oh, we got a, we got an answer back already. We did. <laughs> yeah. Well, let me let me finish this. The triple crown format. So the triple crown itself. I'm only aware of horse racing that has a triple crown. What else is a comparable? A triple crown? Yeah. Uh, I mean, like three races in one, or just calling or, it, or a the, or the mini series in that. So the triple crown, I'm only aware of. Uh, we did it racing. in outdoors. Oh seven, oh eight. There was the monster triple crown. Redbud was around. It was oh high yeah. Point. Any Red other Bud sports and, though? No. Any um, other sports? I think. No. Anything comparable? Or are you we know where they the where they hype it up and make it motorsports like a prestigious related? thing? Motorsports uh, related? I don't think so. Not that I know of. Not I don't think I so. Know. I don't yeah. think motorsports has ever really kind of well, gone out. What it, it's not triple crown, but what's the big three twenty four hour racing? Le Mans, oh yeah, Le Mans, Daytona, Sebring. Sebring. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But those are but there's twenty four and then the twelve. Sebring's the twelve hour. Is that a three race series that kind of thing? I mean, yeah, it kind of is, but like it, it kind. <laughs> It kind of is, and it kind of isn't. It's, that it's isn't. like a thing for like drivers of like winning the big three in a year. Yeah, well, it's a big deal to them, but like to everybody else, they're kind of just like, yeah, yeah. it's just another fucking race. I don't know. For horse racing, it's a huge thing. Yeah, because yeah, you have the Preakness, you have um, Kentucky Derby, Kentucky Derby, mm-hmm. and then what's the other one? The uh, Downs, or what? Belmont. Something. Belmont, yeah, Belmont. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. yeah. So like, I I think it would be cool again if we hyped it up and we truly made it a series within a series. Again, you do the same thing you're doing right now. Pay points. To the finishers for the overall yeah, thing or but whatever. Give the guy a bonus yeah. and more than a Salvation Army trophy. Because if you do this, okay, then that then that allows them to go back to sponsors and be like, okay, well, if I win this, what's my bonus for that, you know? Yeah, yeah when you're negotiating so, contracts and stuff, which, yeah. Which I'm sure all these guys are, if they haven't already, if their deal's still going, I'm sure they've renegotiated contracts for winning a Triple Crown race. Much like Moto wins or yeah, something. Yeah, I, I, and you know, if I'm like Levi Kitchen, I just went off sweeping a, a triple crown. I use that as leverage going into a deal By for the a way. 450 ride. Like, yeah, hey, we'll get to it with the 250. We'll get. To it, yeah. we'll get uh, the last thing I'll say on that is, is that could you imagine though if they start to do this? Because obviously we know how we have SMX, and then if they were to do something like that, all the guys like Eli, Mookie, Christian, Craig, Ando, Barsha. That have just been around for all these years, and then now all of a sudden, like, oh, now you guys are trying to get it figured your shit out, and now you're putting all these different series and you know all this different money. Yeah. Now that we're on our way out, yeah, like well, really cool. Right yeah, up. I'm sure Ricky'd stuff, be stoked too. Stuff happens. Fuck yeah, with Ricky, the way Ricky structured his contracts, he'd be like, hell yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, anything else on Coop's ride, or that was just kind of Coop's triple crown ride? I mean, that was just... he was really good. The, I mean, he was good the whole entire night, but like that third main, like. And we get to when we talk about Chase. I yeah. mean, dude, he got around Chase pretty quickly and then dropped him. So yeah, he was we'll kind of making some progress on Eli and Jet in that first one too. Yeah, he everybody, was. everybody talks to me about how oh, I don't like Cooper Webb and this and that. The guy's a fucking saber tooth tiger. That guy is awesome. He right? also yeah. gets yeah. you know his arm down pumped up like morning wood. <laughs> down to eight. The points. We'll get to that. Morning wood, dude. We'll get, morning we'll wood, bro. We'll morning we'll wood. wood. If morning wood could. Solid, morning wood solid could. Eight on the morning wood. Or yeah. What? So, so, <laughs> <laughs> I don't think his. I don't. Stop. Yeah. Just, <laughs> you, you know anyway, how I was going with it. it. All right. Stop uh, it. So Hunter goes eight two four for third. Oh, you want to talk hey. about getting a gimme? Yeah. Oh yeah. Hey, that he was, was a gimme. He didn't back away from that at all. Yo. He's like, well, I kind of got that one, but yeah. like, I'll take it. Well, good. We'll take the transparency. Thank you, Hunter yes. Lawrence. That was that yeah. was a, that was a gimme, but like, good for Hunter though, because we were literally just talking about this on the one show yeah. that you, you yeah. that we did for Indy. Hey. It's like well, Hunter gonna get his fi- shit figured out. You want to know what I'm super pissed about? Go ahead. 
I put him in fifth in uh, RM Fantasy <laughs> and then uh, pulled him. Also, I noticed that RM Fantasy SX is now RM Fantasy SMX.com. There's, a, there's yeah. a URL we missed out on. Yeah, it's kind of like, so, you know. Uh, Supercross Live might be Supercross Motor Super Motocross Live dot com. It's kind of I mean, like you can Ricky. Go buy that up. It's kind of like Ricky every time he every time he talks about Dirtworks calling it the SMX Track Crew, and yeah. I hear that every time, and I'm oh, like, Ricky, man. shut the hell up, stop. Uh, anyway, let them anyway. roll the sport, damn it. Um, <laughs> also, it's been popping out on the interwebs. I think he actually came out right out of the horse's mouth. Uh, type two diabetes. Yeah, what's uh, I've heard that Hunter uh, Hunter Lawrence. Oh, really? He it said, came from him. That's what somebody said. Yeah, I somebody know said on, on somebody a said Weej, that. Uh, a Weej interview or something. Yeah. That's shocking. Interesting. I would have to do some some looking, but that would explain a lot. It does, yeah. That's shocking to hear. Why do you say that? I asked when I heard the rumor, but I did. I, no one seemed to know for sure. Why do you say If that? you're dialed on your diet, and I mean dialed, and you're doing blood work, and you're doing all this shit, and you're dealing with Epstein-Barr type things... You're fucking dialed. How do you oopsie your way into di- diabetes? See here, there's a misconception with that though, because diabetes at least type two, and I thought two? the same thing for type two. I thought the same thing for a long time. Like everybody's always associated diabetes with people who, oh, like you know, you can't handle your sugar and your diet shit, and like all you know with glucose levels. But apparently, like, and this would be something to have coach talk about. But a lot of like triathletes are type two diabetics. Like apparently, it, there it's more common for like very in shape guys that have really like high intensity workouts. Are more type two diabetes, and I'm not gonna pretend to know all the. Does Justin have type two diabetes? I definitely, I, I definitely that. don't have diabetes. <laughs> I have diabetics Di- in my family. Diabetes, but, but apparently uh, it's more, it's more common. Me, at least. <laughs> yeah, no. Well, that makes a lot of sense too, because there's a lot of comments like when he finally started having success on the 250, he was like, "Yeah, we got some things figured out with my body." Yeah, he so said that he all the had. Time. He had digestion other issues, digestive right? issues at that point. Because he even go back. Out. And still has the digestive issues. I tell you what, though, man. Going if if yeah. he's got type 2 diabetes, and he's obviously got the right people around him, he's got the money to do it. But I'm going to tell you this. If that's what they figured out is his issue, it, dude, that's going to be that's gonna be rough for the rest of his career. Cause is like, it? Because I feel like it'd be easy. Type 2 diabetes, Because you know what you're doing beforehand. So, like, the for problem, example, when you, when you do, like, the insulin pump and stuff like that, yeah. like, you kind of fucking know what you're doing beforehand. So you can actually kind of trigger it to where you have more, you got a little more razz, or you got a little less in you. But the problem, though, is is that you're right. You're 100% right. And once again, I'm not going to try to articulate this as, like, I know the actual, like, ins and outs of Neither it. Neither of us fucking do. Let's yeah. But, like, I mean, growing this would, up... This would be a good subject of coach talk. Growing about, up, like, with if a If he lot, would even want to... I bet he would. Well, not... I bet he... Coach talk about it yeah. forever. Yeah. Um, yeah. Growing up with a lot of people in my family that had type one diabetes, like going through all that, like you're you're right if you're dialed. But here's the thing, though, you have to be dialed all the time, though. If you're off just a little bit, which we all know, race weekends can be hectic, especially get to the nationals. No jets and donuts, you're saying? No jets and donuts. <laughs> uh, if he if he misses anything, though, it could spike him really quickly. So you're right. If you are dialed, and I'm not saying Hunter's not, he's got to be super dialed. But he's got to be super dialed because if he's off just a little bit, it's going to be like the rough weekends that we've seen from him. So that's why I say that, like, and that it could be sense. tough. It could we, be tough because we've seen him do great, and we've seen him do like, eh. and and like I said, Supercross. Like this actually makes a lot of sense too. Why Supercross was a little bit easier for him even in the 250 days yeah and then you get to outdoors and it's like phew, yeah like it goes off the fucking rails so you think this is a long-term thing with him then you don't think this just came up i mean dude that I would think this is i think this make is a lot of going fucking, on for a while it would make a lot yeah. of sense it would make a lot of because if you're di- type 1 diabetic you're not going to miss that because like you're like on the edge of death if you have digestive tract issues it also leads to those other things yeah. too so yeah. it, you know, it's interesting how this all shakes down. Maybe one day we'll have an interview with him and yeah, ask him some questions. I don't know. Hey, uh, when I see my best friend at Red Bull, I'll tell you this, though. I'll that makes a sure. seriously it does make a lot of sense, though, guys. Like, it really fucking does. Yeah. If this is legit, it makes a lot of sense. And, and if he came out and said that, Good then for thank him. you for being thank transparent. You. He hurt his ankle in practice or lower fib or something. Yeah. Uh, and still raced because they didn't think he was going to race last night t- or Saturday night too. So mm-hmm. I think Hunter's got that. So thank you get, for the yeah. transparency. I think HRC. Hunter's got that. Yeah, and like to, we're talking about this like, damn, what a fucking bad dude for racing with diabetes. No That's shit. It. And we don't have to sit here and question the stuff anymore. No. A la Tomac's ankle injury for the last <laughs> however many weeks. Yeah, yeah. Now we know why he like hasn't been great. Yeah. Yep. I truly so. think that he's he's the guy kind of guy Hunter Lawrence that when he's faced with a opportunity to rise to the occasion where he has to then he does really well and i mean if you when look, he's kind of got an out to just be a pussy then he will every time i mean if you kind of look at his whole mxgp career that pretty much just 
that's like on the nose. And when he came here, he was awesome too. And when he yeah. came here and did the the designations, it was it was fucking lights out. And then, well, I don't know what happened then. But it seems like even when like for example when we were Iron Man and he and Deegan had it, you know, yeah. their their battle for the the championship. When he didn't have to, he fucking definitely didn't. But if he was at a spot where he needed to ride the, rise to the occasion, he's he's able to do that. It's yeah. He look, he rode great the other night. He did. He no, rode great. He that whole shot and leading to start with was great. I mean, dude, dude, he he's wrote, building. He was building momentum before yeah. Daytona, fifth, fifth. Rode great at Seattle. Uh, a heat win. Heat win. Like a legit like, heat win. Just Can't take him, this. Is just put him in the same level as like Justin Cooper in our eyes now. <laughs> I mean, yeah. we we were talking yeah. we were talking about that within, which is like kind of what we expected yeah. from him yeah. anyway. Yeah. Um, and and I think so. he's going to be if he if he has everything if they can get this figured out where it's like consistent. I think that he ha- he's I think he's a better outdoor guy. Yeah, and I think that outdoors could even be a better step. But once again, though, if this is like the type two diabetes thing. That's that's rough. rough. Yeah, that yeah. is rough shit is to have to deal with. All right. Yeah. Not like. I'm, I'm asking. I don't know. Yeah. It. I mean, dude, it's it's definitely not a walk in the park. Like if you're having an off day. <laughs> right. Moving on. AP gets fourth, going three eight six. Kind of a quiet, quiet, quiet night, fourth. but rode well. I so. think. Uh, also victim of the red flag or the cross flag. He jumped on one lap. Yeah, well, so. him and Noan Coop did. Yeah. Well, um, Ando did it twice. We'll, we'll get but to this. Yeah, <laughs> white flag lap and checkered flag lap. Fucking uh, Vince Foose. Well, I, yeah, I, I got thoughts on that. We'll, we'll yeah, get to that. We will. Uh, Sexton goes 10 5 3 for fifth. Where, where was that? What was going on with that 10? I think he's just staring at that Star Truck. Or no, actually, he got. Ready. Ready. Oh. No, he stole it. Can we talk about that? Can we talk about well, the Star yeah, thing? Yeah, we'll talk about that in a second. But he got caught up in that AC situation, he did. though. He was, so. like, last. Yeah. He was, like, last. Yeah, the first one, yeah, he was caught up in that AC situation. Can we he talk was about, down there. Can we talk about the Star thing for a second? Yeah, sure. You weren't what here do you last got? week to talk about Oh, you guys about talked it? about it? A little bit. No, I told well, him he that he was an up. idiot for saying it was Hurlings. Oh. <laughs> well, I mean, Hurlings was there also. Sure. And I feel like an idiot because I agreed with him. Yeah, sure he was. I mean, uh, they both were. Can you? Sure he was. Because we were talking about how, sure how large my morning would would be walking okay. in and seeing Hurlings and Sex and just ripping motos on star bikes together. The only thing, the only thing that I've heard is he rode that bike and he got off the bike and he goes, "I don't know how the fuck Eli goes so fast on this thing." We that's heard, all we heard. Complete we, opposite. Yeah, we heard See, that's all. I, Ricky that's all. said he. Ricky said he talked to him and said he liked it. Well, yeah, Ricky I mean, caught him in Tallahassee, like at the bank well, or something. I mean, the guy. <laughs> No, seriously, Ricky was like, I know he was riding it because I was in Tallahassee and I saw him. Which, thinking about it this week, logically, it makes sense he went to KTM because he probably made a lot more money, money. in KTM. Yeah. yeah. But they weren't gonna it, was a, it was a money move the in my fight, opinion. The fights he's having with that bike right now? I don't know. I mean, here's the thing. If he would have picked the star bike, though, somebody would have been on the out. It wouldn't have been like the. It wouldn't have. He wouldn't have been in that with Eli, Coop, yeah, and yeah, Jacobs. Yeah. yeah. yeah it, it w- it's. Why? They have a gazillion dollars. I there's no way there's yeah and there's no way no, Chase is gonna Ferrandis be on a team. didn't want to ride for that little bit of money. Ferrandis yeah. is a prick when it comes to and now he's going prick, to Husky, but he's a prick when it comes to money, which is, he is. why he didn't want to continue to ride there. He could have. I didn't know he had the option. And now he's gonna go to Husky yeah. in 2025. Ugh. Like, uh, like you don't he, like your Husky? He could have. I mean, look at any Austrian bike right now. Everybody wants everyone on dog shit. Husky just doesn't give a fuck right now. <laughs> uh, as far as the Chase thing. I mean, yeah, they got a lot of money, but there's no way I could have seen like Chase Coop and Eli Allen or anything. I, I think that whole thing is very interesting. I almost feel the KTM group looked at Coop and was like, "You're full of shit. Our bike's good." And now the defending champ comes over there, and they're dropping their drawers to do whatever they can. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, he's got that WP suspension. Um, also on the TCD thing. Okay. True. There's photos of TCD stickers on Barsha's forks. Really. Riding. And then I, I did get a Snapchat from a gentleman that actually works at TCD with two gas gas cases in the shop. I can ask him. I know those guys really well. Yeah, old Tell Tim. Ben. No, they're doing it. They're doing his stuff. I will. I will. Mm. I will. Uh, well, here I actually got the screenshot. I will I, ask. I, the, I, tw- I tweeted it out. So if anybody wants to go on, I will. Twitter, I will pose. I will pose the question then for you boys on Sexton. Then, um, does he go to Ducati in twenty six? Yes. Oh. Yeah. Well, that's not where I was going with that, but like I know somebody asked that question, but like you, be- you believe that? I mean, they're not. The way it's, it's going, him, it's the, not, way, the way it's going right now. Well, then your boy Jet's not going to be on that team. Well, that's fine. Okay. Jet doesn't have an issue with his bike. He's going to MotoGP. We hear. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> Jet doesn't have an issue with his bike. No, he doesn't. I mean, he could stay at Honda for the rest of his career, and I think he's fine. I mean, here's the thing. Can you imagine Prado and Chase? <laughs> uh, what's his? Na- uh, Sexton signed this KTM deal super early. Is it two or three years? 
Dude. I wonder if he has an option to get out of it. Hey, why don't you DM that same guy that responded to us and see if he knows what the deal, I, how long I, his deal is? Because I'm gonna, I think it's two. Because I'm gonna pose the question: If this continues to go south, which it's really weird because he comes off of Indy. Uh huh. Going Sexton right now. Yes, yeah. he came off of Indy, and I t- I said this to you like, damn, like Chase looks like he's because his speed was there too. Yeah, like the speed better. was there. He was great at Indy. Um. It's been good for a while. And then he goes to Seattle, and he was good. Should have won it, but you know, decided to stall it like ten million times. But then he goes, then he goes to St. Louis, and he's just like there, like not nothing all day hey, long. Do you, so there was an interesting comment, and I didn't put it together until we're literally just talking right now. Do you remember the kind of backhanded comment that was it? Dazzy made. About the guys who were at Honda before oh, not yeah. properly developing that bike. Mm-hmm. So it makes me wonder if Chase and his dad, and this is nothing personal against them, but if they're not good at that side of things, and then they go over to KTM here. Mm-hmm. Push in a certain direction. And they're mm-hmm. trying to push it in a certain direction, but they don't really know what they're doing per se. And, and that's a relative term. Yeah. But, and so they can't get that to work either. Then is this what we see the rest of his career? Is he's God, I hope jumping not. because he thinks the next thing is going to be better, and it's going to either be <laughs> when, either when in reality it's just him. Yeah, and you know, he, and he doesn't know how to properly test. You and, know what the shitty thing about whatever? that is? Is like he's looking at that Honda going, yeah, man, that front end was unpredictable. But even even if you look at the way the summer went, but he was still really good, and there were times where he was matching Jet. But then you look at Supercross where the outright speed was always there. You're looking at that going. Man, I would definitely take that Chase Sexton over this Chase Sexton right now. And I understand he's third in the points. He's 20 back or whatever. So, like, hey, whatever. But I'm just looking at last year and I'm going, dude, I'll take the guy that would tuck the front with a 10-second lead over this Chase Sexton at yeah. any given moment. I mean, moment. the thing is, have we really seen him this year uh, just we have that we speed? No, no, I don't think so. Not at all. That, I don't believe like so. Like, he even had last year, let alone the next level to go with uh, Jet. Uh, no, because there's, a, there's one question that will answer this. How many fastest qualifiers does he have? Yeah, that's exactly it. Okay. Yeah, and and because I think I think even even Jet would tell you, and he, he even said at the last round at the SMX round in in Los Angeles that like when Chase wanted to go in Supercross, yeah. Chase Chase could match him all day long, and it wouldn't be a problem. Outdoors too. Yeah, and yep. outdoors. So like, and I have not seen that. I'll I'll be honest. If we get into next year and they're still struggling with this bike. There's going to have to be some hard looks in the mirror about him and his dad and being able to develop a bike, yeah, but, period. But right now, I will, like- I, I'm giving them the benefit of the doubt right now because mm-hmm. there's not a single guy that is happy with that motorcycle. No. Whether, it be, whether it be white, whether it be red, or orange. There's only one guy no, no, that Barsh seems... No, just happy with it. Since when? That's what He's they're ju- saying now. Sarcastic. Since last week? No, okay, well, I'm not. Oh, well, sure. because he TCD said- started doing his shit. He says he's so, fine since last week. So now sure. he's good. And he has been riding better. Mm-hmm. So, um, I mean, and Plessinger's kind of an oxymoron, too. Like, what, I don't know why he likes that bike, but... No idea. Because uh, they let him ride in the woods when he wants to. But Mookie can't Hates ride. It. Christian Craig Craig's just like calling it a year. Two of the best guys day. in the whoop section, arguably, and they can't go through the whoops on this thing. Christian's just calling it a day on the year. <laughs> yeah, he, 100, he I bet he goes to Triumph or something. I bet he don't even ride outdoors. If he can come back. Oh, he ain't come back. No. Who? You think he's just Craig? Done? No, no, he's gonna he's gonna come back for someone else. He's he's uh oh he's riding his contract out. He ain't never touched. He's that getting bounced. He's getting bounced from that team next year. I'm saying if his elbow thing. Oh yeah, like, yeah. Elbows Oh, are really I think hard like I think he is physically able to come back, but I think he's Mentally. also milking it a little yeah. bit to get off that bike. Connection Honda. For sure, I could see that. You know, considering we talked about that last. We, week. You know what? We yeah. think he goes to like the Phoenix deal. Yeah, or, well, I mean, Dylan, they're basically swapping. They're swapping. Yeah. Him, and, him and Mookie swapping. You know, I don't, the, think, I don't think Craig's milking it. I think that he's just no. no oh, I, I think, think he's. I think he's. he's it I think he's dealing with shit, but he's like they're doing make a swapsies. Like Dylan's going to Husky in 2025, and Christian's going to go to the I, Phoenix. I think team. if things were going better, he was able to ride through that issue. But there was still enough of an issue there where he could be like, "Hey, uh, I'm getting this fixed." Can't hang it out fast and it, enough. And it's yeah. so unfortunate for Christian, and I said this when he finally like took the time off, that you look at how good he was on that star bike last year, and it's like, dude, he should oh, be yeah. easily be running close to the top five. But as far as Chase goes, yeah, I mean. Thank you for standing right in front of the camera to do that. Really, <laughs> appreci- really appreciate you getting right in I, front of the camera to turn yours off. If they're, what, uh, what an idiot. If they're. If this is just going to be what it is at KTM, I want him to just—he's got to get out now. He's got to get out like within the next year. Hey, put him back on a Star 250F. 
<laughs> and he'd still be getting no, better results. No, we're not results. talking about Christian Craig anymore. We're talking about Chase. Yeah. Put him on a star 250. Yeah, no shit. Like Put him on a star 250 have in the 450 class. That'd be fun. The way fun. this is going, it would not surprise me by midsummer if we start hearing rumors of him signing with Ducati. Ooh. To be honest. Chase. I mean, dude, and Ducati already mapped their plan out straight from the horse's mouth. Like, they already 26. put their, pl- they put I mean, their if, plan if, out there. If Coop got ugly enough to get out of his contract, so can Sexton. Yeah, but I don't think Sexton has to get out of it. I think he's only got a two-year deal. Maybe he has three, but I think it's only two. And if it's only two, that's 26. That's perfect. He'll sign with them here, guaranteed. Yeah. We'll, because we'll keep watching, sucks. but it's not going well. Nope. All right, uh, moving on. So, okay, here we go. Now we're going to get into it. Barsha goes 6 Oh, four, shoot, 10 I just turned my six. camera off. Ah. Yeah. Here, please that. walk back. Oh. Please, please walk do not back walk in front, in front of that of the camera, camera there to, so we can. Okay. I was real fired up Saturday night. <laughs> yep. Let's, 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 I bet you let's, were. So, you in this spot when you're coming into a corner. I've never been teed up. Okay. So apparently, having listened to a few or things. Mitchell Harrison tried teeing me up once. Uh, Good job, Mitchell. Well, <laughs> I'm just kidding. And then I, I, I caught him sit. and almost beat him. <laughs> what? At Battle Creek. What? Mitchell Harrison? What was Mitchell on? A Super Mini? And you were on. It, a, this was like 50. 85 days. You put oh, Cole at Battle I was Creek. About to say. In any era, you put Cole in Bra- at Battle Creek, and good luck beating them. I thought it. you were about to tell me, oh yeah, Mitchell was on a 250. Well, this, like, you're this, high was, as fuck. this was 85 days. Oh, okay. 85 right, right. days. 85 Not disrespecting days. your skills, bud. Not disrespecting yeah. your skills. And then at all. Brian was sitting around the fire talking shit about me and didn't know my mom was at the same Hell fire. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, he also <laughs> stole beer from Dave Doney, so it's okay. Fine. Anyway, um, yeah, stole a beer. Beers. Plural. Look, beers. Yeah, beers. Did you oh, see? Oh, cool. He cooler hopped and stole two bush lights. Oh my God, can All we right. fucking stop talking about that? Whole twenty four pack, bitch. This is gonna be like a four hour show. Let's go. Fans love I'm, it. I'm trying to. Okay, let's quit interrupting each other. Damn. Okay. <laughs> Did you see his apology video on Instagram today? I no. think it's all sincere. Yeah. I think it's sincere too, but it was funny when I listened to it because I go, "Well, you really just went well." My bad shit happens without saying my bad shit happens. Like I mean, I also look. seen pictures I mean, of him after the race going over to Jet yeah, and talking to him. Oh yeah, no, him I've seen the videos like and man. everything. He yeah, was, like a man. He was, and, he, and apparently they all went over to the truck, the Honda truck afterwards yeah. too, because they were just like, we gotta make. It. He didn't mean to do it. No. Now I do question, and I did this Saturday night too. What the fuck was the exit strategy? Supposedly there was a line there, and everybody okay, keeps. I'll bringing, break this down well, for you. Hold buddy. on, let me let me let me finish here. Everybody keeps going to the Dungey Stew incident, right? Of well, Jet turned down, blah blah blah, whatever. Okay, Jet needs to learn and again, track awareness. The, yep, track awareness. Barsha should have that track awareness to see that you were in a straight line. There was there was nothing in front of you but Jet, and I understand why he was doing it. Him in the freezy situation or Fucking whatever. Vince freeze. <laughs> freeze is always the thing. He, I mean, he, was, he was involved it, it was, in two things. He's always in his involvement. I mean, the, the fucking Red Cross was his fault. Like, damn, too. dude! But then stop every weekend. But at the same time, too, I just don't understand the exit strategy. If you're trying to cut to the inside to keep Vince behind you. Just go around the inside, but going 100 miles an hour in a straight line towards the exit of the turn. Because the, if you go back to the Dungey thing, because I saw somebody post a picture, the Dungey Stew thing, that was like middle of the corner where Stew turned down and, and Dunge was coming up the middle of the corner. This, if you look, Barsha is headed at the end of the tough block coming out of the corner. I mean, you're not even going to hit the berm, bro. So, like, racing incident? Whatever, everybody's okay, so we're cool. We got two weeks off, but at the same time, what the fuck are you doing, man? Light him up, Cole. Let us hear it. Well, so I, I'm talking. <laughs> so race, it, it's a racing incident to me. Yep. You, you've got Jet Lawrence is racing ahead, uh, so he's cutting down, trying to get past whoever's in front of him. His same, 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 and, and the same and bad Hunter, tendency and then, that that James used to do, where he wouldn't be. Yeah, I'm, get, I'm the getting other into that. That was that was going to oh, be part yeah. of it. So. So, Jet Lawrence is so used to being out front and cutting down. James Stewart was famous for this, and he'd get run into all the time. Um, and if anybody wants to be like, oh, Jet needs to learn how to ride better in the first couple laps, go back to the first main. Eli Tomac does the same lap, same same Shit. line on the same lap, basically. In all fairness, so there was both of them were in a line that was there, from what I understand. The Barsha line was an actual line Correct. that guys were taking. And the jet line was also an actual line. So, Jet is racing forward in front yeah. of him. 
And Justin Barsha <laughs> was racing behind him. He mm-hmm. has Vince Freezy behind him, of which we people. know who's going to run it in. He's beating him to the exit of the corner, and he's going to hit the end of that and apex it as hard as shit and go. Jet just happened to be in the middle, and by the time that he notices, bef- before he switches his brain from behind him to in front of him, it's too late. Racing deal, man. It is. My other question, though, is... He was going to make the turn. It was a flat straightaway. Like, this isn't like we came off a jump or something. It was in the switchbacks. And? So, how is your head not looking? That's my that's my question. Justin's? Like, yes. Because he is riding like this, and he is out of his peripherals, has a Vince Freeze fender in front of him. Yeah, first lap. Shit happens quick. And he's like, okay, I'm co- I'm going to I'm gonna cover this guy. So, he's out of his periphery, yeah. covering the line. Look at right, yeah, you like this? <laughs> this he's is, covering the line. He's and like right as he switches fine. forward, burr, 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 burr. Jet is turning down as he really puts his focus on the line that he's going on. And as soon as he sees that, he's grabbing front brake. He stops. He's right into him. Look, I'll just say they're yeah. they're both at fault. They're Jet, both at fault. Jet can't turn down that hard go. early go. in the main, I'm and then Barsha. I'm not gonna go. I'm gonna go. I'll go I'm, sixty forty. I'll go sixty forty. They. It was more Barsha's. Seventy thirty. It was That's more bar. Section. It was more Barsha's fault. But once again, Jet still needs to have track awareness. Because you can't you can't cut down that hard at the beginning of the main, but also Barsha, you can't go. What about Tomac cutting down that? Everybody hard like being okay. a Stu guy, like Stu did the sh- same shit all the time. He did. Like you can't you can't do that. Like it doesn't matter it how ultimately much. Ultimately, ended Stu's career. I mean, it kind of yeah. did because he was never the same after that A one. Yeah. I mean, my thing is though is, too, if you watch it, and I'll have to go back and watch it some more. But from what I've seen, when Jet makes that pivot, I mean Barsha's nowhere close to him. So like no, but that could have been under- anybody else though too. I know, but I understand like track awareness or whatever too. But it's like okay, how much track awareness am I supposed to be looking? Because no, you doing, gotta you gotta anticipate a, that it's gonna happen. I I mean I guess, but he's doing a one eighty pivot in that corner, and when you when you go to do that, I mean, as soon as there, he pivoted, you you look, he hits the brakes too. Jet yeah, hits the brakes. Yeah, like, there, as I mean, soon as he goes, he's like, oh shit. Yeah. I mean, everybody likes to do the whole thing. Well, oh, when you when you have the 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 bike length or whatever, like you control what's going on. That's very true. But that goes all out the window when you're in the middle of a 450 Supercross main and it's the first fucking lap. Yeah. And but, you're in the pack. Like if you're out front and you got a little bit of gap already, I'm not saying Jet's more at fault. Barsha is definitely more at fault. Yeah. But Jet is also gonna have to realize if you're gonna get shitty starts. Another person I've seen this stu- do the same thing all the time. Canard used to have this shit happen to him all the time. Yeah. Shitty track awareness. Like, you you have to anticipate the guys behind you of what they're doing. I People be like, oh, well, that's stupid. It's not fair. Nobody said it's fair. But when you're in the pack and you get shit, a shitty start, yeah. you have to be aware of what everybody's doing. Just like you anticipate the guy in front of you, what they're going to do, you also have to anticipate what the guy behind you is going to do. Because even if Barsha, that's not behind him, doing Mach 5 going into the apex of the corner, like, that could have been... And I'm not picking on him, but Cade Clayson. What if Cade's just trying to go to the apex of the corner and he's in the inside yeah, of him? Yeah. Same thing. It was more Barsha's fault. Yeah. I'm it, not d- saying it just happened to be Barsha. It just happened to be Barsha. A- hey, look. And Fred. Because and here's Fred. my here's my question to you. If that would have been Freddie Norn, if that would have been Freddie Norn, we're pissed, but we're not all up in arms yeah, as some of these other shit. people are this right now. True too. Poor well, Freddie, but we're not giving a shit. Yeah, same poor Freddie. Nothing thing against Vince Freeze. Yeah. But all right. I got two cents on this. But I hope Jet. I hope Jet's okay. He's, he put from, out a from thing. From what I've read, okay. he's good. Yeah. All right, so two oh, well, things we'll on see. this. And the first one <laughs> is a week uh, to tangent. Get so, stuff at least. <laughs> <laughs> right? The, the little tangent I want to get into with is, is, is with the broadcast, and not just this sport, but I really noticed it with this sport, is that everybody in this just says, well, obviously this and obviously that. And I, every time I'm like, half the viewers at home don't know what the fuck you're talking about. And you're saying, obviously. Yeah, no, that you got to you got to describe it and give lay, lay it out there so the viewer at home can see what the fuck's going on, right? Now, something that neither of the three of you said about this is that when Justin came into the corner, he was on the front wheel. And when you're on the front wheel, Cole, what are you what are you doing? You're along for the ride, right? Well, yeah, that's what I said. Like, as soon as he looked up, he grabbed front brake, and that was it. It was done. He was over. It was all over. Once you're on the front wheel... You were, ho- you were hoping to make the corner at all. Well, yeah, you still you have no drag of the rear wheel. You have that energy of the back end just going through the air, mm-hmm. pushing you forward. Yeah, you not like that more, and yeah. you can't really let oh, up. Oh, no, now your yeah, front end's I mean, really squatted, and you're like, oh, shit. Yeah, now I mean, had the Jet end. not be there, the rear wheel still would have been planted, and he would have pivoted. I will say, done. though, you that... Know, he would have still made the corner. Yeah, there was a lot of people like, oh, he wouldn't have made the corner. I'm like, dude... He would have made the corner. Would have been sketchy for sure, but he was gonna. He would have somehow pivoted inside the corner. Hundred percent. The crazy thing to me though is, is that I don't think I've ever visibly seen Barsha 
that empathetic yeah, we'll for see. something that he did after the fact. Yeah, because 100%. people people were like. What was it? What was he doing? Yelling at him? I'm like, no, bro. He was like, holy shit, did no, I just and, do that? And, and I saw something too where Ali Stone, the manager over there, was like, partially like, he came to me after the race and said he wanted to pull off. He felt so bad. Dude, he's even looking over there going like this, and like you could see his body language. Yeah. He, you could just see him going, oh, fuck. Barsha's got children now. That, that's what he, happens. He didn't mean to do it. No, he right? didn't. Like I said, more Barsha's fault than Jet. 60 40, him. Jet still needs to have track awareness when you get a shit start like that. Plain and simple. Immediate reaction. I was motherfucking him, but yeah. I was yeah. cheering my oh, yeah. ass off. Oh yes, this is exactly I just, what I wanted. I, th- two things came to mind. I, was I like, even oh, said championship it. got tighter when yeah. I when I said and you, I even our group, group text. Crown, though. I said no yeah. fucking way. That was the first thing I texted to our group text. I was like no, because no, all I'm thinking of is he's holding the side. I'm like. Did he just blow his forearm out? Because all I'm thinking <laughs> is, Jet just blew his forearm out. Because he's going I, like this, and I'm like, oh my God. All I could think of was, like, I had flashbacks to Tomac in Denver last year. Mm. And I'm like, wow, there there that goes. And then when I saw his bars, I'm like, oh shit. And then when I saw it again, I'm like, holy shit. When like, I he, saw the actual incident, I was like, damn. I was like, <laughs> shoes. Punch. Wow. For sure. Yeah. Um, all right. So Stu goes 798 for seventh. Just there. Hey, Good. he's just there, man. Yep. Uh, Jet goes two three twenty one four eight. Lucky it was a triple crown. Hey man, he hey, was lucky. Look, I have it in my notes here. The only person that can beat Jet is Jet. Oh my god! And we're still proving that point. So he would say cool. that. He yeah. would say that. It's cool. It's I mean, fun. he's already been beat a few times this year, Bro, so like, didn't I mean, beat his we, beat. We all keep going with the oh these rookie mistakes and stuff, and yet here we are. He not only a rookie, he has been the one beating not only himself. a rook, rookie mistake, then he gets center fucking punched on the last race of the triple crown. And he still got with an eight-point lead. With a rookie mistake. I mean, getting beat is getting beat. Plain and simple. Like, you can, see, you can shake your head all you want, but it's factual. It's like, it's literally facts. It's I, I not mean, subjective or objective. It's, it's, it's I, literally I facts. Just go, I just still go, it's this good, his rookie year. It's only going to get better. Or it's just going to be the same shit every year. He's going to win titles, but he's never, he's he's never going to not deal with adversity. So, Hold on, we'd rather go around in a circle here. I want to talk about No, I mean, Jet. it's factual. This is why the whole 72 wins and perfect season thing is hard. As, first off, this is why he's never going to have perfect season in Supercross. He's still young. Because of dumb shit like this. So You he, think he's going to grow and develop, right, as a racer here? Yeah, but he could also Forkner his ass out of this in, in yeah. six months' Like anything, months you're on dirt bikes, man. Anything can happen. Like, once again, we, we've we, all seen it. We, we keep talking about how we can't compare him to any other, Forkner. We, any other person in this position, which is factual. You know what I mean. But once again, riding a dirt bike, I always say this, dude, his bike could grenade on the face of a jump Barsha and it's all over. Barsha could into him and fucking yeah, break exactly. his arm. Yeah, you that, could get a shit star and stack all, him in the first all, turn. All of that stuff could happen. Yeah. So like, yes, would it be unfortunate and not be his fault? Of course. And we don't want to see that. We want to see all these talented guys live up to their potential. But this is why I always talk about is, is that why it is so hard to be the best for a very long time because even when you are the best ar- amongst your peers, shit's going to happen whether you like it or not. Especially mm. in Moto and Supercross. Exactly. Well, shit's going to so happen. So you, you want to talk about the flag right now? We can talk about the flag. So I'm going to give you my thoughts on Go the flag. It. Go for it. So we got Jet after the race, and, and a lot of people are going to probably disagree with me, but you got Jet Sorry. after the race. Disagree with you about a Jet thing? Why going for my nip? Why going for my nip, man? Quit interrupting Things me. Things are sensitive these days. <laughs> uh, so, Jet is pissed after the race about them not waving the flag. Okay. Yep. Can you do that? Valid. With a red cross flag, it's not meant to be waved. It has the red cross on it, so you can see the red cross. If the guy's up there waving the red cross flag, it looks like the white flag, and he probably motos for another lap. To me, yeah. However, I will back up the thought of, yes, it would have been hard to see there. The line drifted to the outside. You're focused on a rut going up a fucking 60-foot jump. You don't expect what? it at all. Huh? Yeah, you don't. I mean, you expected it maybe from the lap before. I don't know. But uh, we have the technology. Maybe put some blinking lights up on the fucking finish Thank line you. thing. Thank you. Let's do that. But, again, it takes these situations like this. We've, when have we ever seen a situation like this before? You Never. guys have been watching Supercross Freak. for years. When have you ever seen anything like this happen? No, that was weird. Not that many dudes. So now we learn about it. Of course, it's Vince Freeze. <laughs> of course, it's, 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 Vince, Freeze. Of Either course it's Vince Freeze that puts the flag out, and he somehow his name's attached to it somehow. But uh, now let's see if any changes get done because of this situation, and and see what happens from there. Or, or maybe our guys are going to be more aware from now on. I, I don't know. It's a learning thing for everyone in all First parties. First off, the guys are not going to be more aware. Second off, did you see Gypsy's take on this? Because he's he's saying something. Very you know who didn't jump on the Red Cross flag? Eli Tomac. 
VRM, mm. baby. Enough said. Uh, so, okay, so so <laughs> with him, he's got... Eli Domag did not jump on the Red Claws flag, but everybody else did. Eli Domag did not jump on the Claws flag. There's... You got to pay five, attention to what's going on. Five dudes. How come Eli didn't jump on the Red Cross flag? Good for him. I'm glad he's, one he's guy an away rider, yes. was paying that, attention. You got to pay attention, man, because like here I'll all say to you, and I agree. But, but the, five other dudes, including you, and the, Well, they were all locked into a battle. Put, yeah. put the Red Cross flag out at the entering of the corner so somebody has an idea what's going on. I agree Lights, with that. Yes. But don't I be agree ju- with that. But once again, though, I'm not going to give everybody a pass on jumping on the Red Cross flag. I didn't say we had to give him a pass. They broke the rules. I have no problem with the penalty. Yeah, There's a I'm lot saying, of what I'm, I'm saying, saying. The rule is, can be adjusted. There Hell needs yes. to be a fix to it. Now there were several things brought up to me here. Number one, yes, the red this cross, issue can be fixed. The Red Cross sure. flag is red and white. Okay, we have red and white tough blocks. We have red and white gear. We have red and white bikes. We have red. And, and white. if you're waving that thing, it looks like a fucking white flag. Yes, so much which is why they see. don't mm-hmm. wave it. Because did you hear about that? They used to wave it. And you know what happened? People Dungy, jumped. Dungy jumped on one. Dungy did and that quite a bit. And they went and complained. And now you know what they do? They don't wave it. And mm-hmm. now they're complaining because they weren't waving it. So that's a whole conundrum in itself. It's on the finish line. Why does the finish line not have lights? Yeah. We have lights in other parts of the track for other jumps, but the finish line doesn't have them? This is fucking dumb. Yeah. So let's just check that off the list. Second off, this is a prime example for in-helmet communication. Ricky was big on pushing this. This too. Is, is that a your prime solution? example for it. Everybody's been saying this for years. I mean, they tested they tested this at the nationals 10, 15 years and ago. Michael Essie tested it. Monster yeah, Cup. but yeah. the technology now is better with those Cardo units and yeah, stuff like here's, that. Here's here's the thing coming from and and you also should know this because you are a NASCAR guy, but it's kind of the same thing with the pit boards. Like a lot of guys would be for it in the beginning. And then they would get to the point that people would be talking to them all the time, and they go, "Shut the fuck up." Well, that's yeah. between the mechanic and the rider to and, say, "Don't fucking talk to me." And a yeah. lot of, pe- and that's the thing though. A lot of people would get annoyed though because you say that, but if you're the mechanic and you're trying to relay a message, you say, "Don't talk to me." There's a lot of guys that don't have that self control and they'll just keep yapping uh, away. Like I've listened, I've listened to Max Verstappen scold his race engineer, yeah. "Shut the fuck up, stop talking to me." And all he's trying to do is help him, and he keeps talking to him, and he's yeah, like, "Dude, I'll be honest." Don't give a shit because of this. Yeah, because right you're here, not racing though. This right or, here is a or prime it's prime example. Is this or, you guys' a solution right now? It's or, not my solution. Or you have it's not even between the mechanic and the rider. It's the race directors or whatever that are in the tower and they put out a message, red cross flag, finish line. Every fucking rider on that track hears it and they're in yep. intercom. Yep. One yeah, guy. Any other does. solution? Justin, you got a solution no. for this? Other solutions. Well, that was I mean, solution, there should yeah. be lights on the finish line jump if we have them on all the. Yeah. Other I'd say lines. just literally put the put the Red Cross flag at the entering of the corner so somebody has an awareness that yeah, something's that going on and they too. don't that, even have to go that far. So this is there's a pro- not a flagger there though. This is something. But there yeah. should be. This is yeah. something else they talked about too. Is like there wasn't even a yellow flag prior to it to sing signal them. Hey, pay attention. Something's going on. I mean, it literally was just that flag yeah. up there uh, on top of they're waving the white uh, yeah. checkered. We, like the timing was a abundantly about, yeah. terrible. About 10 years ago, when the wheels on the ground situation became relevant at the Nationals, they used to literally put lights on the faces of every jump. Uh-huh. Lights are on, wheels on the ground. You leave the, you leave the ground, you're going to have an issue. Yeah. We figured out a way to do that at every national track for a year. Which is incredible. It yeah. is very incredible. Like, how the fuck did you guys do all that? Yeah. But, yeah. Yeah, it's just... Or we can just chalk it up and look at it as like, hey, it's one of those things that's part of our sport. I think that's true, but I have an actual solution. What's your solution? Yeah, let's hear it. So I'm big about not just bitching, just a bitch, and having figuring out a fucking yeah. fix, right? Now, for me, the fix, Piggy's backs off of a new change for us this year with the green on the, the triple class mm-hmm. leader, which I think is amazing for our sport. I mm-hmm. really think it's, for mm-hmm. if you're in the stands or if you're on, on the TV at home, unless you're one of us is watching real close, like, most people don't know who the fuck is leading at the in the race at the track, right? Okay, well that's on the triple clamps. Now you tell me what happens if you have a bar pad, that the ends of it light up yellow or red when there's a caution or a red flag. There was talk of that too. Yeah. That's a real easy thing to implement that cha- changes a lot of shit because now you you don't really even fucking need the flaggers on the track because it's right there on the yeah, bar pad. Yeah, because we know a lot of flaggers don't give a shit. Well, it's very difficult. I, I was a flagger a few times and. When I break my arm or whatever, I still go to the track and just flag and make 20 bucks or whatever it is. But uh, this is a great way for us to grow this because now you have an additional safety feature, right? And you ha- you can have spotters upstairs that are triggering it. I don't know how they do the stuff at the triples with the with the lights and the, 
whatever master pools families involved with that stuff but i think it's a bad it's like uh almost like another transponder looking thing that has the battery and stuff in it and then there's just two wires that run to the little light things so realistically yeah, i mean it's no different than the cardo solution pick pick it pick a solution do you want somebody to tell you in your ear or do you want a bright light in your face i, I don't want anybody to tell me because i need to see it immediately because for me for someone to tell me if i'm chase and i'm coming around the corner they're like oh uh chase uh uh by the time you're there it happens in a half of a second but if a bright red light flicks on, you see it, yeah. most likely. I like, I like that idea a lot, actually, because you could put it right on the triple clamp, triple clamp there, so you don't really have much more than what you already got, because you already got it for the. Because every bike has the leader lights, yeah. every single one. Mm -hmm. So you already got the battery pack and stuff there. One wire with one more LED thing. Yeah. It's got to be on the bar pad for me because yeah, bring like an, I bring an LED light up nah, there, the but, but the bar pads spin and will fall yeah, off. Yeah, but where, where are you going to ends though? Because it's it's got to be real visual. Right? Yeah, and I don't know where they're going to put it because you got a kill switch, an electric start button, a fucking I mean, launch button, a I fucking mean, nitrous button, there, a fucking a turbo yeah. charger, <laughs> <laughs> like no, all these I'm fucking saying, buttons. If you look over there, a button, not a button. That, ignore the grips, but you, look over there on that bike. If you just put it on the triple clamp above the stem nut. And below the bars there, like when you're riding, when that lights up, that LED, you're gonna see it. No, hey, because so when I'm riding, I'll do I'm not under... fucking seeing that unless I'm sitting on the back of but the seat come, coming around the corner. But it'll come in your periph. So it I'll... will come in your periph from down there. I'll do one even further. Okay, go ahead. Uh, there's a helmet company that we were working with at Tucker Power Sports before okay. th that all went underground. Okay. Oh God, I forgot what that company was even called. But in the helmet. And it would take, this was a whole lot of theoretical because you'd have to get all the helmet companies on board or whatever. But it was for street riding and it was connected to the GPS system, which all these fucking bikes have anyway. Yeah. And if you were riding down the road with your GPS on and there's a left hand turn coming up right here in the chin bar, kind of uh. in your periphs, it would blink left, mm. blink right. And if there were cops like connected to your ways, cherries and berries would light up and it was kind of right up in your periphs. Wow. Interesting. Yeah. yeah, I'd have to figure out what that helmet was called, but look it up. It, it, and is, something like that would be cool, but again, it's it's getting that's all these manufacturers the, That's a lot of stuff in the helmet. Like I said, the... the it's getting all these manufacturers yeah, on board. I don't board, want any so. weight on my, on my head. Yeah, the light, the light on the bike... It'd be like half bike, a gram of a light. I mean, it's a, yeah, but you got to have a transmitter so they can turn it on. Like, there's... If you got a Bluetooth or wireless signal yeah, off I, the whatever's already there to run the lights on the fork... It's not, it's not a terrible thing. Like I said, the, the one little thing about this song, sorry to interrupt no, you. Go for it, go for it, go for it. I haven't ridden a brand new electric bike yet, but mm -hmm. I've seen a bunch of them, especially like, for example, uh, Suron and uh, what's that real popular Stark. one? Stark. And they already fucking have an electric bar pad. Yeah. It's already there. Yeah, their monitor's built into their bar. Yeah, yeah. so yeah. guess what? Yeah, yeah. You already got all the shit right I, there I, anyway. I like all of that. I, I'm For any of that, I'm just, I'm not on board with the whole headset thing. I think that everybody thinks it's good in theory, but it's, it's, a lot of guys would bitch about it right away. The delay is the tricky part for me because if I'm coming around the corner, like the, it has to happen and they have to decide to red flag it and they have to communicate it. Like that could be ten seconds. I just have a, I just have the feeling that a lot of guys, especially if you're locked in a battle and you got somebody talking in your ear, it's going to distract you because now your brain's going to start going to the voices in your head. And in 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 car racing or truck racing, mostly car racing, it's a lot different just because you have so much more ground with your surroundings of what's going on. If you make one lapse in judgment out there on a supercross track and somebody's talking to you and you're leaving the face of a triple, huge problem. Like that's a, that's a fucking issue. I don't want to hear it either as no. a racer, but let me tell you what would be really funny, Cole. Oh, I'd be fucking with my riders. Justin's my rider. Yeah, imagine Cole riding around and Justin's yapping in his ear the whole time. Or <laughs> Justin's out riding and he's getting ready to go off the face of a triple, and I go, uh. yeah. <laughs> you know? I can definitely, I can definitely see a privateer just like. Dead last. I mean, and you all got of a Rod Bell's mechanic or something. Oh, or, mechanic or, or, just or fucking with him every time. Or oh. Carnell's mechanic or just something. A, just every time. Oh, man. That's just, awesome. But I like all... <laughs> off, the, off the whoops. Oh, my God. All Can right. you imagine like 30 minutes into a national moto and your mechanic's just fucking with you? All right. Let's... Uh, you, you get Jim Holly in there? Like, oh, yeah. <laughs> let's, I got Japanese let's, uh, let's blast through some of these. Yeah, we got... Going we're on. going over uh, time. Blaster. <laughs> what did Champion Tool, tool Storage just say? Did you DM Champion them Champion Tool Storage is... Are they listening live? I don't know. <laughs> uh, That's okay. weird. Justin, you just spoke that into existence, buddy. <laughs> yeah, I sure did. Uh, don't Justin, call me bud, pal. <laughs> don't call me pal, bud. <laughs> it says don't we call can me make, bud, says, dickhead. I don't know what you said, but it says we can make that happen. I don't know. I don't know either. Anyway, uh, oh, I think they had a 
thing of this really i don't know anyway right? uh, justin cooper goes nine ten nine for ninth lit kit lit kit not yeah. only well, not only lit kit but once again in time practice just yeah fast. Heater. Hey, got out heaters front, got out front and learned that pace like yeah. bro heaters man First oh my he he, really good too they crashed right no he was, just kind of faded it, or was that last week he was out front and he crashed it wasn't yeah it wasn't seattle I think it was. I think it happened in Triple Crown. I think you're right. Oh, he did crash. Yeah, yeah, yeah. he bounced off the wall by yeah, the mechanics. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. But dude, I don't. So he was in the mix. Yeah. Man, yeah. I know he used to do this like every now and then in the 250 days, but I sometimes don't know where this one lap heater speed comes from. Best is boy. Dude, it's wild uh, too. I know why. I know why. Oh, boy. Justin Cooper is having all this speed because he debuted with the 191. It's also because his head right, tilts baby. to the All left. All right, here well, we go. I, it's just wild to me, man, because like Jet at the end of that that practice, like dude, Jet is hustling, and then he goes. One thousandth slower than him, and you jet. You could tell Jet's just like fuck this. Like this kid is not like he's not going faster than me. But it was just. just it's impressive to me that like his speed was that good when yeah. you have Jet out there hustling to try to beat your time. Yeah, I don't know. Well, uh, going back to Jet though, but I watched that fast lap where he put in like a second or Dude, whatever. He was so sketch though. Man. He made mistakes and was still that much faster. I think his mistakes though, like that's the thing. He overshot something. Like, like it's his natural things. talent that pulls him out of that. Like he's like, oh, I'm just gonna make this work. But it does it does show though that when he want when he's actually pushing for like the fast laps, he's not smooth what really amazed me was how he stuck that bike before the mechanics area oh yeah go back and watch that he did he comes off that double and it just fucking well, you know that honda rubber. turns on a dime so yeah uh all Didn't right tuck the front end shane goes back, down, back in cor- the corner of the seat right do what when he when he landed off that coming into that that flat corner with a little berm right before the mechanics area he kind of sat off the back left of the seat to get around there right i uh, yeah, i don't he, it looked normal to me he just kind of landed in the in the pocket i don't know if he runs a seat hump or what he runs but it just landed Trash. and went all right, uh, Shane goes 12, 11, 7 for 10th. Shane's just kind of... Hey, kinda... Shane, Shane was talking about that mud race speed, Shane, and he think, had it in that third main. I think Shane has accepted that this is just where Shane's at, and Shane's cool with that. We made, hey. some, we made some improvements to the bike. Like... That, that third main was good. Yeah. I looked up there, saw his name in fifth or so, and I was yeah. like, hey, this is who he was this talking about. This is who about. he is. This is what he was talking about. Uh, Ando goes 4, 7, 19 for 11th. I think after the the red cross flag, his night was just done. Yes, he is just kind of. Did you hear my con- my TLR tinfoil oh, yeah. hat? You hear the tinfoil hat? Did no, he show? didn't listen no. to the show last no. week. Obviously, no. he is throwing the rest ah. of the season. Ah, kind of the way he his, felt when he was at Husky ah. to get out of his Cowie contract to go ride Triumph next year. Hey, one oh. step further, the Triumph compound is in Georgia. Yeah, somewhere dude, down a there. stone's throw away from Club MX, they, where he has been yeah, putting no, himself yeah. lately. They are that Triumph team too. Over the GPS is killing it right now. They are. We've watched that. We're you know, because they got a title sponsor. We'll get some of that in a sec here. Yeah, I mean, you know, if he's just throw, throwing it away to go to that Triumph team, man, Prado's just going to be all by him low. His lonesome over there. At oh no, the the big green claw. Oh yeah, is having big discussion. Well, hopefully that discussion does not with involve. the Deegan Danger Zone. Did you really just <laughs> pump that out there? The big claw wants him bad. Are you are you allowed to say the that? The claw out wants loud? him on a green bag. Are you allowed to say that? Out Michael loud? Lindsay's been blowing it all over Vital. No. We will talk about that. Gotta hope not. We'll, ta- we'll talk about that in the mi- in the in the in the, the Japanese complete racing somebody good again. Right. Regarding, regarding, regarding Anderson, before we move on, something that really bugs me about the triple crowns that we mentioned in Anaheim one uh, wrap up is that if you win a main in the triple crown, nobody fucking remembers it unless yeah. you win the overall. Like, hey, we can't have those stats. We don't. The AMA can't keep track of all that. I mean that boy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, AMA I mean they're still whatever. But nobody still using the same timing and scoring that Jeff Stanton used. The same thing is though that nobody Six here times. remembers that he, Jason Anderson won a main this year, but it was at a Triple Crown. And when right before Eli Tomac won this weekend, Eli Tomac won a, won a main in Triple Crown, and nobody gives him any credit for that. And that's nope. bullshit. Nope. Yep. It's our sport in a nutshell. We don't give a shit. <laughs> well, yeah, our sport's we can pretty fucked in a lot it's, of ways. It's a lot bigger than it's us too, a lot. right? So I mean, we're all pretty messed up too i guess you could yeah and i mean you know if you're around the sport you're pretty fucked up somehow i'm fine no you're not <laughs> why because you're you well that's fine <laughs> anyway uh so kenny uh puts a rock through the radio or something through the radiator in the first one has uh, to the someone's back light. fender goes 18 13 5 for 12 i had the biggest figure skate moment i've ever seen in my life Woo! <laughs> 
Did you guys think that when he was like shaking his his leg off the bike in that rhythm section that it was getting sprayed with coolant that was burning him? Is that what that was? About? Honestly, no. He hit a kicker and he was trying to stretch it out and get over that. And thing. I was just kind of laughing the whole time. <laughs> Because all I saw was the back angle when Jet was coming through, and I just saw Kenny go like this, and I'm like, is Kenny trying to be a figure skater these well, days? I saw, like well, I saw him get a, he got a little cross-roaded and then hit it, and then it started kicking him forward, yeah. like reminiscent of his crash. Oh, yeah, you know one. his butthole puckered. He and, was like, yeah, oh, God, not 2018. Out, and then... And then he saw it was smoking. He just went VRM'd it. Then he got on the new the, or on the second bike, and the second bike the brakes didn't work. Uh, mm. The motor was different. I can't remember what else they said. There was a whole bunch of stuff. So, so they gave him there. Shane's bike. Yeah, something like that. Then <laughs> uh, he goes thirteen, twelve, fourteen for thirteenth. Hey, upward trajectory do, here. Do you want to give it to him? No. Is he owed an apology yet? No. Not yet. Not yet. Okay. Not he's got to make it the whole season. Uh, I don't know what he's getting apologized for, but I'm giving props for sure. Well, Justin said he was a rich kid that didn't need that ride, and <laughs> we all said that yeah. he was going to DNF and not make it through very much of the season, oh. and we did not have high hopes for him. And then yeah. Tevin Tapia inserted and his Tevin opinion. Tevin Tapia was backing him up, said we were yeah. dickheads. But I don't even understand that because like, I don't think Tevin and Benny are even friends. Apparently they're best friends. That's weird. They do karate in the garage you got, together. <laughs> never mind. You think they anyway. read good housekeeping? Anyway, yeah. Uh, anyway, Chiz goes 15, 14, 12 for 14. Didn't have to Damn go to the, I needed him in 15. Did not have to go to the LCQ this time. Nope. Colt Nichols goes 11, 20, 11. Did have to go dude. to the LCQ. Went through the LCQ. Kind of. Props. He's, there. He's here. Good Mitchell looking Old, dude. Mitchell Oldenburg goes 14, 21, 13 for 16. Doesn't want to ride a 250F again. Nope. That, he's not. Hey, he's how, he's how, out. how about when he cased the shit out of that and everybody thought it was mint? Yeah. Was little, yep. That was a, that was a hefty you wanna, one. You want to know the best thing? He didn't jump that jump all day, and he went, yeah. So when I got that hole shot, I was like, shit, I got to jump this now. Otherwise, I'm going to get past. He goes, and I did not give it enough. <laughs> I don't think I'm trying to jump that thing for his lap. I mean, that is just that is the level of crazy that all these guys are that I'm just like, man, this is why I will never be that good at moto. Because for me to go out of track the first lap of a race in front of everybody and be like, you know, I haven't jumped this all day. We should hit this. I, this have, uh, I have experienced that before. You've done that? Uh, yeah, so it was the what? it was the big ass jump after the ski jump at Redbud. It used oh. to be a little smaller, but yeah. I was on an eighty. Yeah, and didn't Wait, jump. You're talking like the triple up, the uphill triple. In the yeah, back? it was smaller. Okay, where eighty fives were jumping it. Okay. Oh, this was a long time ago then. Yeah, and uh, yeah, dude, I didn't jump that thing all day, and I was like fourth on the first lap, and the dudes all in front of me did it, and I just yeah. Right off that thing. Kind of looked like Matt Wyman there for a minute. <laughs> hey, what, did you, what did you What did you try to jump it on? Oh, I made it. What, what, what were you on? A CR eighty five baby screamer. Oh, okay, this is a long time ago. CR eighty five screamer. Back back when I was really P- PR two head on my old 07. Oh wow, Chris Durham. <laughs> I really thought about jumping. Hey, that. you want to know a good story about the eighty five days? Mm-hmm. Okay, go ahead. So your boy gets so on the bike one day. This is a very long section. And it's it's vibrating a lot more than usual. <laughs> and I'm said. like, Dad, wow. are the, uh, the motor terrible. mounts loose in this thing, or what's the deal? And he's like, no, man, I think everything's good. Turns out I get hit at Baja, cylinder fucks up, and and it took a chunk out of the cylinder. <laughs> so, so On I, the inside? No, like the header pipe where it went in, like kind oh. of a freak deal. Oh, so I pulled the part. other bike out of the truck, went and rode that. Anyway, long story short, my dad put a 105 cylinder on it and never told me. And I didn't. Sick. I couldn't even tell the difference. <laughs> Legend. And then we'd go to Battle Creek and race, and we were in like eighty-five, nine to thirteen. And good old days. I'm not gonna call people out, but certain people you were there. Should. Certain people there were there racing. You really should. And we were going down the back straight, Let's neck and neck, it. and this bike fucking pulled me like I was standing still. And that's when we knew one twelves were legal in eighty five nine to thirteen. <laughs> you know. You know what's this story? Kind of sounds like a person would do this. Kenny Bass. <laughs> Uh, or Matt Wyman. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Matt did get caught. I I can I can attest that Matt's eighty fives were just modified. Super minis, on the other hand, they were were one fifteen. <laughs> pretty pretty maxed out. One fifteen. We well, were pretty maxed out. Well, who protested him that one day? Dude, there were people that protested him when he was in the... Mike Seeley's dad protested him one time at Battle oh, Creek. Is that why he's got class. the Mike Seeley beef? I'm like, oh my... Yeah, because his dad's like, he's got a 725 kid in that thing. I'm like, what? I'm like, you kid's on a 252 banger. We're on a stock 250F. But those minis, though, the 85s were just, you know, some cylinder work. But Anyway, I rode an, 80, an actual 85 for the rest of the time being. Oh, uh, so. You should have rode a 112. 
I should have had a badass 112, but I always sucked on modded bikes. I was better on stock ones. All right. Uh, Justin Hill goes 2115. No He's one back. Cares. Team for 17. No one cares. He's back. Back making him. Never smoked him. They are pissed at him. Everybody's pissed because he was a terrible lapper the other day, and somebody said something to him, I guess, and he was like, I don't care. <laughs> he yeah, was Justin like, meet Hill. me at the tough blocks. Yeah. Justin Hill damn near got cleaned out like yeah. hard by Aaron, Aaron Plassinger. That's what happens when you're an Get asshole about getting lapped. Yeah. Uh, Good for Jeremy Hand goes 17, 18, dude, 16 for 18. Dude, Jeremy Hand job just doing what he does. Jeremy he Hand is does. just putting it in mains, man. Dude, he's good. He's good. He's good. I didn't uh, realize how solid he was. Oh, yeah. Vince Freeze, Freezed. The, Dude, there uh, were a lot of incidents last night. <laughs> <A lot of laughs> <incidents. laughs> Free, freeze Lots just he freezed all over that whole I entire mean, race. He caused Jet just getting fucking right. My buddy hates him almost as much as JT. He was literally texting me. He's like, "This fucking guy every time. Wait till we get to the mains. Guaranteed something will happen because he can't not go a race without something happening." And lo and behold, <laughs> lo and behold, he <laughs> causes Here we like, are. like inadvertently causes the cross flag controversy. Yep. You can just write a movie around Vince's life, yeah. and then just he anything. just. Uh, He's just there and, just, and causes he's, almost he's the death of Jet. He's always been this way, man. He's Not always been this way. It's, it's, it's a scripted way this goes. You Vince always got to have a villain. Vince is AI, been, dude. Vince yeah. has been this way ever since his days in the B class, man. He yeah. has always been a jackass. Vincident is the greatest fucking term I've ever heard, I think, though. We got another Vincident around here. It's just good stuff, Lots man. of incidents. Uh, Cade Clayson, 1916-18 for 20th. At least he made the main. Freddie Noren, 2017-20. I, I had a note that he crashed in the whoops, I think, in the first main. I'm sure he <sighs> crashed Freddy. more than that because he's Freddy. Oh, he did. I saw him laying there. And AC goes DNF 22-22. So does anybody think that that was just... Big announcement coming out of the I was about to say, yeah. Podcast, oh, yeah. yeah. He's, that's, that's Big it. Big announcement is it, coming is next Is it week. that announcement or is it an announcement oh, that he gives it another go with no, a different I, team? No, he's nope. done. I he's think it's that done. announcement. I mean, we all knew. We all knew. But I think Big this... Big announcement next week. I think this really like put it we'll over touch, the top. We'll touch on this. Yeah, I mean, when, when that news drops, we can talk more about it. But, man, I really wonder how his trajectory would have went if he would have got away from Kawasaki. Uh, Really good. Probably would have had a bunch of titles by now, to be honest with you. Yeah, maybe. So It's just I, a bummer, too, because like when that happened, and and I, I, I can understand why it did, but you could see the frustration in, his, in, in him like when he's realizing like that, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm injured again. Yep, because he was yeah. like he was like throwing his hands around, and I don't know if he like stomped his leg that it like wasn't fucked up, but he just like you could tell you could visibly be like, yep, nope, that was we. He's got he's got a good ankle. Bruce. We're like it's hurt. We literally watched the last moment of his career. Yeah, at that hope point. Not. And, and it was no, just, he's, he's done. He's done. It's just very heartbreaking too because it was uh, his mechanic that he was real tight Shanty, with last yeah. race yeah, so, before he goes to NASCAR. Yeah, what's like? Do you do you know the story on that? What's up with Shanty going to NASCAR? Like, what's his gig going to uh, be? You know? So, I don't know, but Mario Tessa is a guy that worked in the amateur race shop. He mm -hmm. was, like, wrenching on Drew Adams shit and was, like, amateur support mm -hmm. guy. Um, he actually left two or three weeks ago, and he's working for one of the Reddicks. Oh, nice. Mm -hmm. The 45 car. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, that's a JGR umbrella kind of car, oh, and yeah. I would imagine an opportunity opened up, and he that's was like, yo, Shanty, you want this deal? I'll yo, put a word in for you. That's a dope deal. That was kind of like when Derek Rankin went to uh, did the IndyCar shit couple years ago well that didn't last yeah, still did, but i mean that's a good uh, opportunity yeah you know? that was kind of a shit show for him he was talking about that not too long well, yeah ago. it's a little that's bit a, of it's a little bit of a bigger deal when you start going to four no, wheels no there was some other things that were a shit show around that that you know it, it's it's kind of like what we learned with all this stuff as we dive more into it the shit show does not just apply to supercross oh no of course not oh so, no there's just more no. money there's just, just more yeah, money we're in that just world. stuck in a fucking box yeah so anyway all right that's been your four, that's, been your, that's been your 450 race recap brought to you by our friends at gutterworks always well hung like cameron sackadoo sackers all right Ake now it. we're gonna get into the complete Works. racing solutions halftime report do you want to cut and we will after halftime uh because i gotta take a leak anyway um your complete racing solutions halftime report this week or this month we're spotlighting the coach rob podcast so we're advertising a podcast on the podcast Love that guy. Podcast, podcast. He wants, dude, he wants he me has, to come down to Orlando. He so has two my, new podcasts out. Uh, one that goes through all the ins and outs of amateur racing, and one that goes through all the ins and outs of vet racing. So make mm, sure to go check those out. It. I believe it's Coach Rob Podcast so, com, but I don't. Since have Since we're advertising right his podcast on our podcast, yeah. can he advertise this podcast on his podcast? Well, I'm not paying him money. Uh, so doubtful. I was gonna say maybe he could uh, he pump get, up the team BRM shirt on he, his vet he pod. Does, reach around there. He does give yeah. us credit uh, when he can when he's on podcast. I haven't listened to actually his stuff uh, yet. I need. Dick. I want to go listen to these two actually, but 
There's way too many podcasts, dude. BRM, dude. I, how am I supposed to listen to my Tim Foil hat if I'm listening to Coach Rob? Okay, like there, there has to be. Do you have two podcasts on at once? One in one ear, the other. one in the other ear. Both of them playing at double <laughs> speed. Yes, I'm no thrilled. problem. I'm thrilled to hear it because Coach Rob, besides being a friend of the show, is a great guy and he's a wealth of knowledge. He and is. for amateur racing and for especially vet riders, BRM Catanzaro is really, really bringing this up too he's he these guys that have a wealth of knowledge that are sharing it what did i call him it's growing our shit big time arthur yeah arthur yeah, arthur arthur yep. um arthur. all right AJ. so getting into this oh inside albert. joke that's not his actual name no it's albert yeah <laughs> i thought it was arthur <laughs> this jackass thought it was arthur. <laughs> he called him arthur i'm like Louis. He we're called him Arthur. I'm like, motherfucker, his name is Albert. <laughs> <laughs> we're at St. Louis. I pick him for fantasy. I was like, what the fuck is Arthur James doing out <laughs> and there? And I look at him, I go, his name's not Arthur, dude. What the? Yeah, that's funny. Oh, this is Albert. Oh, hi, how you doing? All right, anybody have a rant besides me? I do. Okay. Oh, hey, wow. Turn, Kobe. turn that camera around. Oh, here we go. Wow. I'm going to try to Lock. clip this because I think it's relevant. Hey. Just hit the Just hit the camera button. Like go. Oh, he's got it. an Android for lock sure. It, lock it again. No, he's an iPhone. He's boost lock mobile. Lock it again. Boost mobile. Bottom, bottom right corner. T-Mobile. Is, oh, yeah. Yeah, hit that, and then you can go to video. Yeah, there we go. Fucking media guy. Look, at, look at us teaching you how to use oh, an iPhone. Oh, does that even work? Yeah. No, you're good. So watch, I'm going to clip this and be lame. Probably. All right. Holster Co. Reload Ramp. For all your things, go boom, boom, and bang, bang. Links in the description down below. Go ahead. All I got right, two so after this. here is my rant. Pisses me off. <laughs> oh, boy. Pisses you want to know what really grinds your gears? Grinding gears, and uh, never mind. Grinder. Uh, get yourself some RevX oil if it's really grinding your gears. Wow, <laughs> that was a good plug. Good, that was good plug. Good. That was good. good. Plug. I mean, your, deli- your delivery send, was kind of shit, clip but it and send it to him. Yeah, if if your gears are really grinding, get yourself some RevX oil. Exactly. Anyway, um, so I really enjoy and love watching the GoPro videos in the MXGP series. I think they're badass. Like you got the the Triumph guys are running them right now. Yep. And you get a great perspective of how beat the tracks are. Tim and Geiser. all are we are talking about this year is how beat the Supercross tracks are. I wish I could see them from a GoPro perspective. Yep. Yes, I understand the Brian Moreau injury was a big issue because of the GoPro being on his helmet, and they think maybe that's why mm. things happened as far as the paralysis. That's why they pulled the plug on that, right? That's why they pulled the plug on the GoPros in the U.S. series. Now... Here's where I'm going with this. GoPro is still is trying to get back in. You can see them doing videos with the star guys out at the star. Good videos, by the way. Awesome videos. Bring them back to the races. And to avoid a situation like Brian Moreau, whoever is going to run the GoPro, you give them paperwork and say, here are you make them sign a liability release that I'm going to run the GoPro, and they know the consequences if they get hurt with the GoPro on. They sign their life away, and if they want to run it, they can run it. Jordan Smith is going to sign his name and run the GoPro. Why, why Ken Roxon is going to sign to run the GoPro. Why can't we just... Why can't we get the GoPro back on the helmet? Why home? can't we just figure out a mounting system? Like, because I the, run mine on my front fender. Because it looks like shit. No, it doesn't. The the, the front fender mount is dog shit because it vibrates. Brrr, you're going looks like shit. Fine. The perspective is terrible. Yeah, like that, the perspective is terrible. Okay. You put it on your chest, you're looking at bar pad the whole fucking time. Yeah, you can't do it. You the put chest it maybe thing. on the chin bar of the helmet, but that looks spoiled. If you're taking pictures and, and it's still, media wants to see it, it looks lame. And it's still on the helmet, which is the which is the issue we ran into before. Okay, then sign your name. I mean, that could be a thing too. You're right, sign the waiver. Them at all right now, or just no. Sign the helmet? You're right, man. Because those GoPro videos, like you remember the back in the day when they were following the nationals, like the one of Stuart they would do Red- the thirty minute one, the one of Stuart Redbud when he's yeah. leading RV, yeah. like dude, yeah. I w- or the one of RV and Dunge at Washougal yeah. just yeah. battling, dude. I, I'll sit there and I watch those whole from start to finish. Yep. I'm like, dude, th- I'll sit here for thirty five minutes yeah. and watch and, this and shit. In the in the YouTube world that we live in right now, Supercross Live or SMX or whatever, you do a deal with GoPro. Again, you cover your ass. You have these athletes Agreed. sign their there name, has to be and they're way. getting content that people are going to stay engaged and watch the whole there time. There has Agreed. to be a way to mount it not on the bike, because we did it in like the eighties and nineties. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Helmet. We. Well, I mean, Ricky ran one in 05. I mean, to mount it on the bike God, where it looks terrible. fine. Like there has to be a way. This. I don't think. I don't know that, like, I don't agree that it looks bad. The the stabilization in the cameras is so good now. The fender angle is garbage because you're going off a jump and you're turning your bars off every jump. So you're looking at the crowd here. You're looking at the crowd there. Yeah, they didn't they didn't factor in the energy yeah. that goes through goes through a fender. I don't know. There has like, to be there has to be a solution to it. When Moran's has I agree his, with you. yeah, a waiver. 
and put it back on your helmet. Yeah. That's the solution. Yeah. I agree, I agree with that because I'm a big, like, who the fuck is going to tell me I'm not going to wear a GoPro? Get if you want to run the GoPro, you. are you going to sign your fucking name? Yeah, because that's what I'm okay. saying. Like, and do you, understand, do you understand the consequences? Yeah. Okay, you put your pen to the paper and run it. I also like the way that Kevin puts his, Kevin Morans puts his behind the number plate. And that, that's, See, I don't like that either. I, I like an, abo- uh, I an up above you. perspective. I mean, I but in a, world, in a world of not having any, mm-hmm. Kevin's is a good option. Let's go back to the old days where GoPro, we had one at every Supercross, every national, the heat races, the mains, do the 35-minute motos outdoors. Dude, those, those videos, like when I get bored sometimes on the weekend, mm-hmm. like I'll go back and I'll go on the GoPro channel and I'll just go back to like and, and 2012 Supercross and... W- and that was back when, like, they were like PJ Larson was one of the guys that would run all of them. He would do the super crawl, he would do the practices, the heat races, the mains. I'm like, dude, I love it. It was great. Yeah. It, it yeah. And, and for if they want to monetize it, again, we all know the YouTube algorithm is all about engagement and people staying engaged the whole time. Those videos, people are staying engaged the whole time. Dude, it, there's, there's actually one of Savachi when it was 2015. I don't know what round it was, but it was a, it was a red flag restart. And he was in like third, and like Lemoyne was behind him. And you really have to pay attention to like hear it. But obviously, like the, even back then, like the sound picked up oh, on everything. Oh, here we go. Let's bring up Justin Barsha had a fucking GoPro but, on him this weekend. But Lemo- we're gonna hear the conversation between him and Jet. But Lemoyne, though, and I just got a kick out of it. Lemoyne, you could hear him in the back. He goes, Joey, I'm gonna get you. And you could just hear him. And I'm like, what I had to replay he, back. I'm like, jo- Joey is in front of Lemoyne, yeah, yeah, yeah. and, and, and Lemoyne's in the back of just going, Joey, I'm gonna get you. Because they're on a single foot, like red flag reset, <laughs> oh, and I was like, them? "What did he actually just?" So shit like that, like you really just have like to, messing with each yeah, other. Yeah, I just really have to pick up on that. But I'm like, dude, that's the shit that like what people want to hear. And you're right; yeah. people would want to hear that. A little peekaboo. Yeah, like yeah. Just, I was just cracking up. I was like, you yeah, yeah, shit like me. Justin Barsha. Like I can see a TLD team being a GoPro sponsored uh, team. Because mm-hmm. like we would have got so much. Like we would have got the T bone. We got about. We would have got him probably saying, "Oh fuck, I didn't mean to do that." Uh. Over and then we would have got him pulling up to Jet after the race and being a fucking man. Yeah. Or he could have had Kenny with his oh shit moment in the rhythm section. He's probably saying a few choice words underneath his helmet. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, dude, I, I love it, man. I I really do miss those days of GoPro. And they they had content for days. Sign like, your you, name. You could just sit there and yeah. watch content all day if you sign the name. Yep. I That's agree. Great. I so, agree. Good I rant. I didn't have one the whole time I raced motorcycles. Now that I just play hockey and work, now I have a GoPro. It's like, well, shit. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you can put it in the corner of your bedroom did if you, you want. Did you, that's, did you say you had another one, too? That was weird. What? Do you have another one? I thought you said you had two. two I, Justin two. gets uncomfortable when oh, girls are involved. My, now when girls are involved, when he was asking you to put a camera in your corner of your bedroom. <laughs> you never cranked your yank. All I've right. never filmed myself. That's weird. All but right. No, I'm, I never have either. <laughs> yeah, okay. All right, Holster Co. Reload rant here. How do you think I afford that truck? Oh, my God. <laughs> <I'm just playing. laughs> yeah, your <laughs> boss <laughs> your <laughs> boss gives it to you, you jackass. Uh, all right, Ew. so I got two here. So my first one is kind of a personal one oh boy. from today. Actually, I did think of my second one, so do what you want to do. Uh, idiot drivers. <laughs> okay. What? Here's what I hate about people what who gender? drive sometimes. What? What gender? Wait, All of this the is not this okay. is not moto. Explosive. No, it's not moto oh. related. Not this one. Uh, we can do non moto related. Yeah, it's fine. Right. My yeah, other one's only right. my other one's only lightly. Okay, bitch involved. about my NASCAR okay, shirt. Sure, done talking. We'll be over here waiting. <laughs> you can no keep problem. going. We'll you, have a conversation, you two, guys. We cannot have separate conversations. It, yeah. Okay, sorry. And we you two get over there like two little schoolgirls. Hey man, did you see this? Hey, did you see that? Hey man, do you remember him? Do you remember that? Oh, whatever. He jerked me off in the back of the truck one time. It's crazy. Do you want to go jerk each other off in the corner with the gopro or what why don't you go skiing anyway uh idiot drivers making stupid turns so and this is a prime example you know the shell on the corner of west ninja and romance there mm. here's what i fucking hate people will be headed westbound on romance so instead of making a left at the light because it's a busy intersection in all directions instead of making a left at the light so then you can just make a nice easy right into the gas station they will go through the light and then try to turn left across three lanes of traffic, traffic and a gazillion cars. And it happened today, not there, oh, but like a different one. place, uh, right in front of me to where I almost hit somebody when I was driving around. And I'm like, what the fuck are we doing? Oh, I agree. Because then there's the one asshole that like stays back yeah. to like, let the guy go across. Yeah. But the second lane doesn't notice what they're doing. Uh-huh. Boom, coming across. Bam. Bar should. Yep. <laughs> yep. Or like that, that, that shell is a prime example because I get this all the time when I'm going 
westbound mm-hmm. on romance is they'll do that well the left turn there to get into the shell is the left turn lane to get Coming on the opposite westbound. way yeah, yeah which is always packed with cars like there's never room and i'm like you idiot so then Light, they back left up the lane. turn yeah. safe so now you stop in the driving lane you're a moron same one happens with the walgreens on the corner of millam and westnage headed eastbound is they will go over millam and then get in this huge turn lane and like they're head oning left turn cars mm-hmm. to try to turn into there. I'm like, if you just turn left at the light and huddle and right, then right, right in right. there, yeah. <laughs> it's totally, it's way safer than what the fuck we're doing right now. So you're yeah, morons. Okay. I'll, I'll do you one even better. Okay, go when ahead. When the morons go to leave that gas station, yes. they go out where they were supposed <laughs> yes. to come in. So they cross three lanes and take a left yes. instead of turning right into the closest <sighs> lane. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. All right. So that was my first one. Second one. <sighs> Facebook monetization. So I told you this last week. We got monetized for ad reels on, on Facebook. On Facebook. Yep. And it's been great. First month, we made some money. Second How month much? here. Huh? How much? 10 bucks. $75. I was wrong. Really? Yep. What Pay am I man. doing wrong, dude? I th- I've been put po- like, I monetize on my personal reels page. Yeah. And I only got like 55 cents, but I ain't been posting a lot. I was going to say, I, you got to remember, I post usually two per day. At no, a bare okay. minimum. So well, get a picture of a guy falling off a porta potty at Redbud. You'll get thirty five hundred bucks. Well, so the funny thing was, was that I was all like, most of them are like, you get like five cents, like, you know, ten, whatever. And then we had one with AP that got like two hundred fifty thousand views, and we made like twenty five bucks on it. Hell I was like, yeah, that's cool. Anyway, but I get on the other day to check because it's getting towards the end of the month. So I'm like, oh, let's see what we made this month. Again, not a lot, but it's a little bit. Helps. All goes in the pot, right? Uh, and it says, oh, you're disqualified for it. I'm like, what in the fuck? And it says, you've you've broke community guidelines. Well, I look, not using original content. Mm-hmm. I filmed every single fucking one of these videos on my own. Every si- They're on my own phone you were you uh i requested a review don't worry i'm sure it's gonna come back and tell me that i'm not using original content i'm gonna be like well i don't know who you think i'm ripping off but i recorded this Mm -hmm. like so needless to say fucking pissed right now i don't blame you i don't blame you i mean it's 70 bucks like we made another 70 bucks last month before they disqualified us so it's like all right that's cool thanks obama yeah thanks a lot obama jeez Mm -hmm. anyway all right, go ahead. My second one. Let's just keep going back and forth, Randy. You got one? No, homie. You got you got one. No, but this reminded me of what I was gonna say for fucking opening ceremonies. But go ahead. I don't. I don't rant. <laughs> okay. Anyway, <laughs> two hours later, I remember my opening ceremony. So song. we got St. Louis, right? It's still ruddier than all hell. The last how many years weren't this ruddy? Mm-hmm. Can we sprinkle a little more of that white dust back in there as long as there's no rain? Can't use it. That's why the tracks are the way they are now. Can we not put a little bit of lime in? Nope. Can't put it in. At all. Nope. You don't want rough tracks? Lawyers. I don't want the fucking ruts. Lime gate. I do. Lime gate. I don't. I don't want to watch a guy die. I don't want to watch. Okay. Let's talk about safety. Nine whoops. No dragon backs. But we got 85,000 ruts across 80-foot jumps. It is strange that we can't use lime on the indoor stadiums where it won't get rain. I understand the outdoor stadiums because of everything we went through with Limegate. But the indoor stadiums, it is interesting that we can't use it. Well, hey, guys. Can, can we figure something out? Maybe just do the faces of triples well, or hey something? Hey, guys. Don't like... worry. Our last five rounds are outdoors. So it's fine. I know. It's great. It's really cool. I don't we know, we somehow went from being super cross inside stadiums every round other than Anaheim. I get it. San These Diego. are the best guys in the world. They should be able to ride ruts but, and but stuff. Now, and just, now, but fuck, come on. Yeah. Now, all of a sudden, we're just outdoors more than well, we are. Anything. You bring up a good point, and uh, Dave Prater actually addressed this at one point um, in an interview. Not, I think it was with Anton. Uh, he's like, dude, he's like, yeah, we used to be in a bunch of enclosed domes, and then everybody figured out, well, we can build them without roofs and everybody will still show well, up well and also which is there's what's happened there's not a lot of all those stadiums we used to go to back in the day yeah, don't really exist but, anymore but there are new ones now yeah. being built and and they're starting to realize that they can go to some of these we'll call it smaller venues forty thousand people venues but yeah we're, 30, going, to, 000, we're going to east rutherford with, it's like without, ginormous yeah without without a roof well like i said they're realizing they can go to some of these smaller venues and the numbers will work. Well, then don't worry. We're just going to have just inclement weather for the rest of time as Supercross is involved. Nah, they'll start they'll start building them with with ceilings again at some point. Kind of hope so, man, because it's really weird to think about. Like Supercross it doesn't even feel like Supercross anymore because, like I said, ninety percent of the stadiums are outdoors now. I think the ret- I love mutter. 
I think. The I re- mean, I'm fine with it too, but I'm not fine with five. Justin loves motors. I think the retractable <laughs> roof Shut thing is up. going to start coming into more. Oh well, they should do that in Seattle here. Like, I mean, like Glendale? Like they'll say, well, the the Seattle thing is on the other side of where we pit. There is a stadium with a roof. Yeah, I know. that we don't pay for. So. I just I just find it funny because it's <laughs> like, man, we went from only having like when we were in California being outdoors yeah. in Daytona and yeah. Vegas. And now it's like 90% of our Supercrosses are now outdoors. Yeah. It's like, oh, cool. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. Yep. So. Mind if I chime in on this? Yes, go ahead. So I, I like mudders, and I'm mostly because I was, I'm a Michigan guy, so I always do well in mud. But uh, for me, as, as a businessman, I look at this differently. So if I have a race at a covered stadium versus a race at an open stadium, there's probably a significant dollar amount difference in that just to host it. Mm-hmm. Even just to run the HVAC in there is a huge amount, sure. amount of money. Depends where the stadium is. That's true. But if it's open, there ain't no fucking HVAC going. But I'm not arguing all that. I'm just, I think it's crazy that all of a sudden we went from like Supercross, like I said, outside of Daytona, Vegas, and the opening rounds of California were all domes. And now it just seems like 90% of our races now in Supercross are outdoors. And it's like, well, then this is just this is not this is not what Supercross was meant to be well, all those years ago. Yeah, but part of part of our problem is okay. So like, for example, you go to Atlanta. We can't go to Atlanta anymore because oh. the stadium costs too much to rent. Oh, oh. So that's a problem. Yeah. Minneapolis, we can't go there anymore because their uh, uh, exhaust system doesn't keep up with yeah. the stuff, and especially oh, no, if it's it. too cold. Which that's usually when we have to go is when it's so cold. Um, the soft world we live in now, everybody's a big pussy about uh, fumes. It's a big play in it. Well, no. Oh, so, dude. So the last time they had it, Minneapolis 21. Carbon monoxide. Yeah, carbon, carbon monoxide. 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 Like bad. That's what I'm saying, though. Yeah, like, I mean, it was, dude, like, if you. It was a legit thing. Not if you, like, if you not grew up like, into going to the arena crosses, though, like Tom and me, you. like, bro, yeah. you got carbon monoxide. Bless you. Or the Car- Silver Dome. Yeah, carbon monoxide poisoning, like, every round. It was uh, like. Part of ah. the feature. Part of the feature wasn't getting poisoned, Grant, but the granted, smell. Yeah, granted, that's kind of like why Tom and me are the way we are, but, you know. Brilliant. Handsome. <laughs> really? I don't. Travis commented on this post. Oh yeah, I need. A set and of, it, I need a set of those. Oh, yeah. and, it, and it said we can make that happen. So my my thing is, I'm not arguing. You want my address? Or? <laughs> I, I'm I'm not arguing any of the stuff you're saying. I yeah. get it all, and I agree. Yeah. I'm just saying it's a weird thing to think about it that is. like Supercross is not. It just doesn't feel like Supercross anymore. Guess what changes that, gentlemen? Electric bikes with no emissions changes that real quick. Yep, that's I mean, true. I mean, we're I mean, dude. They're gonna Blame. they're gonna have uh, an electric series in the GPS in the next two years. Okay. Oh, hey, hey, yeah. good segue here. Oh, th- I good try. segue I try. here. Let's bring no. this up I like next year. About the GPS on our like complete GPs. racing solutions. So, oh boy, I can already see where this is going. <laughs> Where's I need to buy a ridiculously big. Are spoon. you saying something about the eighty four? Why would you think I would do that? Because he hates him and he thinks he's a joke. No, 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 no. I'm just saying. If I didn't he watch doesn't. The last one. Do well this weekend. Do we start to press the panic button? No, I already told I t- t- told you what was going on with him. I'm not pressing the panic button. What's him. going on with him? Didn't you guys read the text that I put with him? Like I said, oh, he might be not coming to America after all. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah so yeah. what's going on with him? Nothing's really going on with him. He's just kind of at the point that he's just like, hey, like, you know, I, if I get there, I get there. If I don't, I don't as far as speed goes. Well, good thing there's a star Yamaha waiting. Nah. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm serious though. He might not actually be coming to America well, anymore. I mean, uh, that's fine. Like, there's nothing I can do about that. But I'm just, I'm just curious no. with this oh, current yeah. season. Like, oh, when I mean, we... he's already got, he's already did better at the last round than he did at the first round. I, he did go one one at Dutch Masters the other day. Yeah, too, I mean, so he's, been good, one, one Dutch Dutch Rudder. Rudder. Huh? Huh? he's been going one one at the Dutch Rudder. Huh? Dutch Rudder. He's been going one one at the Dutch. The thing is, right now, it's kind of like we're having this jet situation. Yeah, Prado's kind of at that point that he's like locked in and found that next level. Jorge Prado is the sauce boss. There is a, guy there, is no, awesome. seriously though, I know that you like unless you, people no, have been talking about no, like no, there's no, a lot no, of people right now that are looking at Prado and they're going, oh he he might not. Yeah. Did he, he might like, not. Did he take another step up? Yeah. He, I don't I don't like saying this, but it's, unless Jeffrey finds his old speed, Prado might not lose, lose this year. The rest yeah. of the year, really? He's, yeah, and there's like a he lot was of talk like that. There's he a lot was of talk pulling like that, and there's a lot of talk not out of him, but the other hurling homers. Uh, that if he doesn't, they found a new guy. If he doesn't do well this weekend, it's kind of it's you're all, they're almost getting to panic mode like we were with Tomac of like holy shit like he may never come back to where he was. Put it this way, Prado in Spain the two rounds ago he it I was he watching. I'm like oh dominated. I'm like oh this is just the this is just Jet Lawrence on the on yeah. the other side of the pond. 
He yep. he rode the race like Jet Lawrence. Like he he got around Geyser, Hurlings, and Fevra. Like it, it there was nothing for him. Like it literally looked like he could just flip a switch, go around him, and then drop him. The the really cool thing about the what Prado's doing right now is it legitimizes his title from last. Oh, year. Oh, for sure, because, because that was the big talk. Yeah. Is because Fevra a lot like when they would get a start. Yeah, Fevra would start to pressure him, and then Prado would be like, "No, Moss, don't want to yep. do it." But now, like he's yeah. he's tapped into that next level that everybody kind of thought he would be. He won a championship yep. last year. But yeah, like I'm sitting there watching him going, Holy shit. Mm-hmm. I'm like, if he rides like this, he literally yeah. might not lose the rest yeah. of the year. Yeah. Like, I'll this is just going to be jet uh, over it's, the GPs. Dude, all I, I saw was like him dropping into a line and there was like a little bit of a single and there were some stutter bumps coming up. Oh, it. and he just popped and, up and, and he, over. Like, popped up and over. It's, yeah. Dude, I've only been watching the highlights and even, and I'm on that same page of like, Holy shit, he might not lose. And everybody was a little nervous because he stayed here so long for yeah. Supercross that they were like, Ooh. It's but he's saying the other thing. Ready. He's like, oh, it actually kind of helped yeah. with my intensity. Yeah. Because he, like, at the beginning, like, he would have intensity at the beginning of the motos, but when he would only have intensity if he got the start, and now if he doesn't get the start, he still has, he knows how yeah. to up that intensity early. But yeah, like, I'm sitting there watching him going, oh, fuck. Yep. Like, he, he literally might just not lose the rest of the year. Well, which that little thing that he did where he hopped up over the, yeah. uh, the single like mm-hmm. that, that is going to be my pro flow mini moment of the race. Okay. Yes. Cool. It's it's impressive, man. Yeah. And like I, we were talking about this when we were driving down to Indy, like him and Jet, they have little quirks that separate them, but they're very eerily similar mm-hmm. of the way they ride mm-hmm. and approach and connect the track. Yeah. And it just it's one of those things that we're like over here we're all worried like is Jet just gonna annihilate everybody? And like we talked about, like it's gonna take Prado some time to adapt to the Cowie and the American lifestyle. But it gives hope as far as outdoors goes. If he dominates the rest of the year, it gives hope that. Oh, at least maybe it's outdoors, confidence. like Jet, this might be tough for him. Supercross, I still think it's going to be a little bit of a learning curve for come, Prado. Come 2027, the battles will begin. Yeah. You no, guys I, think that Jorge Prado's going green? Yeah. He's already it's done. He's already, he's already he's done. Three-year deal. He's already done deal, bro. Yep. Yep. Wow. Yep. yep. So, all right. Uh, so, a couple, couple other things here before we wrap up the halftime report here. Uh, Kyle Peters wins his fifth arena cross title. Oh, Ryan Brees. Did he wrap it up? Punch, Ryan yep. Brees didn't try to punch someone. I'm surprised know. Brees didn't. I just saw they won it. Brees tried to get in a fight with someone in one of the arena cross. That was Marquee. Yeah, yeah, was Marquee. Um, <laughs> no, I'm just, say Marquee. Yeah, I'm just glad uh, arena cross is back, baby. Yep. We Look, got some good dudes riding in it. We got these days. we got two strokes. I want to see we Jared got two fifties. We got four fifties. I want to see Jared Lesher win a title on that two banger. One of the, one of these days, I'm gonna get my whiteboard out. I'm gonna do a whole video on how I think Arena Cross should factor into everything else that's going on, and how I think this Dude. sport should run. I know it's falling on deaf ears, and it's a waste of time. No, what do you want to do? The, you want to do the it? Ricky Carmichael Cup again? But I just no, ah! no, no, Dude, no. Ricky Carmichael was the greatest Arena Cross racer ever. I you didn't know? Get, you mean when Fortner got his points? I will get my thing out. Out yeah. and my whiteboard out, and I will draw up no, how I, I think it. it should go from amateurs all the way up to pros, all the way up to the supercross thing, and where everybody fits in here. Dude, Tom can, can agree to this because him and me both we we did the arena cross tour for a long time, and yeah. I those were some of the best. I don't know about you, but those were some of the best moments that I ever went through yeah. as far as as motos related. Yeah, a lot of but, fun. I, uh, I, I was pretty good at the tight stuff inside, so it suited me well. But just. The tour, just the whole week, the whole week, the whole weekend, awesome. man. Like going, you know, one weekend doing the Toyota series and then doing Buku and then going back and forth. But the whole weekend from the pro nights from Friday or Saturday or whether it was Saturday, then doing the amateur stuff. Also giving the 65s and the 85s on both pro nights a shot to get there, you know, in front of the crowd. Like, dude, when we used to pack all the stadia or the arenas, oh, Van Andel full. I remember Cody Cam hitting the hitting the catapult on a 65. Dude, it was I love it, man. Nuts. I love it, dude. I I miss those days. The arena cross days were some of the best. And do the racing. I do wish we epic. would get Brock back to Sellers. That. Van Andel was a wonderful venue for that too. Yeah. Yeah, except the pits sucked. Well, I will agree with that. I hated the pits everywhere in that race. Yeah, I, yeah. I, know. I know. Um. All right. So, and then the last thing for the halftime report here, my pro flow mini moment of the race, and this will probably be a pretty decent discussion here on this. Uh, the Brayton interview with that football player. Uh, I'm blanking on the name right now. Yeah, I missed oh, it, but the... I seen that the football player was kind of like in his face, and both of those dudes were kind of like Whoa. the New York Giants guy. I think he, he was. No, he's no. Chicago Bears. Now. Chicago Bears. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Jonathan uh, something. Jonathan Hall. He helps racers. If I heard correctly, uh, I don't think about that. No, he no. was helping less fortunate people kids, get yeah. a shot at playing football or yeah. something. Yeah, like. kids. That's better. I like that better. Yeah, but yeah. he was the grand marshal of the race. Um, but the way. So Justin Braden is quickly becoming the goat of, Love Justin of hosting stuff. Yes. The 
So one of the things, Bye, Dan Hubbard. One of the things I was Hubbard. listening Easy. to. One of the Easy. things I was listening to when he was talking to this guy that I really really liked is Jonathan. Owens. He was kind of talking about um, Jonathan Owens. Uh, like preseason and things like that, and and, and yeah. equating all the stuff together. And as he's saying it, I'm going, "This is next level." interview stuff for our sport here it was during i'm oh, sorry no no, no it no. was during the the combine and i wish they would have called the combine whatever the suit the futures now because futures, yes that's what it was in futures practice. football it was literally be the combine yeah. in yeah. front of the fucking fans there right mm-hmm. that, yeah. was, that was the coolest yeah. i wish they had left and he was he was equating it to it to where it made sense for him because the guy was kind of like well who are these kids yeah. and he he equated it and then that he followed that right into well how does your like preseason and training camp and everything work which then the guy explained all sorts of different stuff about football training camp, which I have no because idea Because that's what I'm he not, knows. Yeah, because yeah. I'm not a football guy, so he's explaining, well, the rookies go here for yep. this day, and then we all kind of work out here, and then we have this many weeks off, and then we go back and we start working out again. Mm. And I'm like, And then Justin's fan- like, okay, this is what they're doing in motocross. The- yeah, yeah. Fantastic. Could you imagine Fantastic. if we would have got Brayton and Daniel Blair all the time? God, that would have been the days. I can't wait till the last day ju- uh, Jason Thomas is doing the mic. Get him out of here. You don't like Jason Thomas? No, he's, I, I he think has he's great. The, he has the worst tone like every week. Oh, that's another one we can talk about. Will, Will Christian, Christian, thank I you for like bringing Will that Christian. up. She's so lovely. Anyway. I don't give a damn. She's um, my favorite. I don't mean in a pretty way. I mean like her. If you ever she know, she's, I don't, JT, she's a great person, but get her off the broadcast. JT kind of calls a spade a spade, which I... Oh yeah. Too, oh yeah. Oh yeah. He he like he, you tried throwing some shit at Ricky and Ricky like didn't touch the top. Well, I mean he'll even do right after they get on the podium, he was like, Yeah, like Eli, like, you know, you just kinda just kinda were struggling a little I bit. I fucking hate that about him. I straight uh, up hate that about him. Why? Because he's like blunt? He kind of I love he, it. he's almost shit talking him while they were on the fucking podium. But what do you want him to say? Do you want him so- to like like Massage his ego even more. I mean, say, or do you want it to be boring? Like, hey, you want to thank your sponsors real quick, man? I just you think that we you can t- you can provoke them, giving you good feedback and, and enlightening the fans and home or in the stands that are listening. I don't know if it's on the if it's on the loudspeakers, but you can give the opportunity to the rider to give good feedback instead of boy, didn't you go fuck that up with his shitty tone? Hey, get a banana. You got a banana? I think I think interview we have- me. I right think now. we have just. He's got a banana for you. I think. We, <laughs> wow. I think we have just. You mean, uh, a, twink, you mean a twink? <laughs> no. Got some tweezers over here. So. Or a, twi- a twinkie? You guys are just getting. You guys are getting real. Wi- <laughs> you guys are getting real. Uh, a lug nut. Oh, yeah. There we go. About yeah. that size. It's yellow. Anyways, <laughs> whoa. <laughs> better go get that checked out. <laughs> I already did. It's fine. Uh, the revolving door of people though that we've had for pit reporters, man, like. We all know there's going to be somebody that's going to be like a Jason Thomas's position who's raced before. Seems Will real. Christian, who is kind of just kind of like, oh, hey, she's there to provide entertainment. It's kind of like Dan Hubbard on Race Day Live. Like, he's just a talking head. I can't stand Dan Hubbard. I don't have a problem as, as a human being. I don't no. know him. Never met him. Seems like I've a nice guy. I've heard good people. But... He's not the best. Host. He's and he doesn't pay attention half the time. And he starts yeah. talking about random shit that has nothing to do with what's going yeah. on track. And I get that's kind of his deal. But it's like, dude, you still have to be you still have to be paying attention to what's going on. And no. he does not do that. No, and he, and there were plenty of times that Daniel Blair last year was like, bro. Mm-hmm. Oh, you could just tell. Visibly tell he was getting annoyed. Yep. Mm-hmm. And Dan Hubbard like didn't catch the drift. And there it's were, like dude. There was things this weekend when I was listening to stuff that was like I put Jesus. it on mute. I put it on yeah. mute. I literally don't listen to Rusty Live anymore. I mean, I mean, literally me sitting here watching practice and doing the lives, people like that better than listening to it. It's him. just ter- so, it's you know, just I'm terrible, like, man. Terrible. It's terrible. It's also the, he does this thing too, where like when there's somebody, their cameras on, and there's somebody in the booth, and they're talking, he'll do this. <laughs> Tom- <laughs> Tomac Pecker. <laughs> no man. Tomac, like- I heard Tomac. I, I so I tweeted this out. Tweeted I said, it on Twitter. I said, uh, Tomac is peckerheading. That means he's stoked. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Did Tomac like it or make a tweet back? Oh, you know what? Oh. I know he lurks on there. Oh, and then somebody was like, "Oh yeah, he's been doing it the whole press conference." <laughs> but no, I just I don't know. Like, people love to show emotion. People love to show emotion in different ways. Oh, that's weird though. Body language. Um, last thing before we move on, okay. Will Christian brings okay. up a very good point to me. I don't know what happened or when it started. She was either. Smoking a pack of Marlboros. Oh, she voice. was out late last night. She was smoking something. Or she just got or, sick. She's married. I'm not kids. even going to go there, but yeah, our, our gutter work segment. But oh, um, if you're catching my, my drift, 
Um, Good lord, dude. How how are the riders thinking that? If I'm a rider, I don't even want to be in a six foot radius of a. You really think that every person on there, that's where their mind went to automatically? I, uh, I got the flu. It was. Oh, it was. okay. You were, I thought I'm you were talking going, about wow. her voice. Where did your uh, head just go? Where was your, where was your... This motherfucker over here no, is implying something, no, and I'm just no, like, no, oh. No. But I'm over here sitting thinking, dude, this she's married my, with kids. What, what head you? are you thinking with? <laughs> that one. Wait, we yeah. know. We know which head. We are talking about her yeah, voice. Oh, dude, and, she could just be just whatever, just. Okay, tired. if you're sick with the flu and shit, riders ain't gonna be down with that. Uh, well, you I'm know what? They have no choice. I'm surprised Justin, does, Justin doesn't like her because he usually likes women Whoa. that are already taken, right? Whoa. <laughs> or women Whoa. that already Whoa. talk manly. Whoa. <laughs> uh. Whoa. Calm down, bud. Calm anyway, down. I don't know. I'll give her the benefit of the doubt. Maybe she woke up with something in the morning. They didn't have time. Oh, she woke up with something. In the morning. <laughs> oh, my God. No. So easy. I think I'm probably the only person here that's actually met her, and she's, uh, easy. she's a really wonderful person. I, she had I, a brutal voice, uh, for sure. I don't have but. a problem with her. I know she's so not Aaron She was sick or something was wrong, but my thing is, like, uh-huh. these, Aaron all like, like Ken Roxon and all these guys are, like, very. It's got some incense going on. I don't. They're very in tune with their bodies and being sick and being exposed to stuff like that. Really, Carrie Hart used to sign autographs with gloves on. Yeah. Oh, they all do that. Mm-hmm. But the, but I mean, riders might that, be kind of. Are the riders women's in tune with it? <laughs> what are you saying? Oh my god. Okay. This all two, right. This dude just turned this into a triple X pod. Wow. Okay. All right. We're gonna we're gonna just go ahead and cut <laughs> you, this. You want, me to call, you, you want me to call Adam Twenty Two? You can go on his podcast. Uh, Oh my god, that was hilarious. We're not gonna talk about that. Uh, all right. Ah, uh, no. I just anyway, got that. Nope. All right. That's been your complete <laughs> yeah. racing solutions halftime report brought to you by the Coach Rob podcast there. So make sure to check them out. Link is in the description below. That was demonetized talk. That was brutal. We are gonna go ahead and take a break because I gotta pee. Let's yeah, let's and then we'll bring ourselves everything back and then we'll in come here. back with two fifties and we'll get this wrapped up. Holy Yo! All right, we're back. Take two. Take two. Because <laughs> the last section we cannot Put out in the ether here. No. 250 Race Recap brought to you by our friends at 50 Graphics. I almost got the bike unburied here from all the parts that we've been coding to uh, get the graphics put back on. Travis is going to ride next good. week. It does look good. I'm, I'm hoping to hit the figure eight track. And I I just tried to make a deal with Travis here, and he ain't having it. And I recommended the book, Donald Trump, Art of the Deal. Well, I thought that was a hell of a deal. And Justin made a racist comment, and here we are. <laughs> <laughs> Easy. It wasn't that bad. But Easy. anyway, it was bad. Easy. Easy. It was bad. What's the labor? Come on down and do one of these. Huh? What's the, what's the labor going to cost me? Come on down. $15,000. Teach him how to do graphics. He doesn't know for, how to do graphics. labor? Yeah. Just the labor. Yeah. There's no way. I can make that much money just staying here and working. So if you want to pay that for me to come do it, great. Otherwise, I'll just Can stay you here come and down and consult me? Yeah. <laughs> Say you need to do Five this, grand. this, and this, and I'll. This guy's expensive. I'm, I'm you know how rich people stay rich? Exactly. Consulting. Listen, if you got the money, honey, I happen to be a builder. What is going on with this segment right now? <laughs> I don't know. I'm, dude, I've been trying to talk moto all night. I'm trying then, to talk moto not, now, and I don't know what's happening right all. now. Can this we? This show is four hours of us oh talking about God. nothing. The, the, the comments God. are going to be. Okay, let's go. All okay, right. all right. 250 West, Triple Crown here. Kitchen sweeps it 111. First 250 guy to do it. Oh, no. Alston Fortner did it in Detroit oh, in front of right. our very that's own right. eyes. That's, that's, that's when right. he was breaking the pixie sticks out. That's right. How could you forget? I don't know. You know, that's a long time ago now. I don't understand how you could forget. Such Put a, a fork moment. in it. He's done. Does <laughs> fork and come back? God, I hope not. Uh, that is the He's rumor. He's trying, though. That is the rumor. What did they say? I mm, I seen him working out in the gym, and then I did see a, a video that Cooksey put out. He needs to not come back until he's 100% healthy. Uh, Good yeah. luck. Okay, so I've got some interesting stuff about kitchen here. So this will be fun because the 250 class is a bit boring outside of this. Yes. Uh, so kitchen is working with Sexton's trainer. Yeah. Yep. Peter Park. Peter Park. Peter uh, Parker. Or, I mean, Peter Parker. Peter yeah. Parker. Yeah. Spider Man. He doesn't yeah, look like Spider-Man. a Peter Man. <laughs> Uh, that's who we should just start calling his trainer from now yeah, on. Yeah, Spider Man. He's working Yo, with Spider Man. Spider-Man. Um, Spider-Man. If that's your name. You fucking gotta own it, dude. Yeah, so, Peter, Peter Parker. Peter Parker. I'm gonna assume that all of us around the table, maybe not you so much, know some of the rumors that go on around that trainer. No, we're all trainers. Most of them. And with him making these strides. Oh yeah. Okay. All right, cool. That's okay. all. Okay. All right. Uh, for me, I 
I think there is definitely a little bit of that, but I also um, Levi is much older and twenty three and, and, and coming in a little older, different mentality. He's really um, good too, and I think he's yeah, and I think he's coming in around guys like Sexton, like Roxon that have been there, done yeah. that, he's and he is smart and mature enough to absorb and listen also and true. apply. Also true. He's also absorbing other things. And applying. He's absorbing a lot of things. And he is also... There's a lot of absorption going on. A lot of absorption. We need to look at that neck next year. And that forehead. <laughs> also, okay, on that topic, <laughs> Carmichael always had this. Yeah, okay. And I noticed that Craig is kind of developing the same thing where they got like this little thing on their lip. You know, you, know, you ever noticed yeah. that? No. You remember Carmichael always yeah. had time? Yeah, no, I remember that. And, 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 and Craig, like and, and Craig was kind of had one. All right, can we not talk shit about Christian Craig, though? Because I don't want Paige Craig to just like light into us. Because yeah, sure I'm, a fan. I'm, a, I'm, I'm a sure fan. she listens. She does, actually. She does comment on some of the stuff. She, no. Me and her are friends, so it's cool. I like Paige She Craig. doesn't listen to our four-hour show. No, she doesn't listen to the four-hour show. That's bride goals right there, gentlemen. That's bride goals right there. Anyways. Anyway. Leave my kitchen. No, I, it's just I think it's a, a lot of it's a maturity thing. Um, I think the the whole Deegan show was a lot of immaturity at the, at the Star Compound. That's why he's out of there. I hope this is also an eye opener to Mitch Payton and the Kawasaki. Uh, you know, I don't know if it's more Mitch or the Kawasaki th- thing. I think it's more Mitch mm-hmm. yes. that wants us guys in Southern California. And we all know when you're young with that much money and you're in Southern California, you're you're a rock star. Temptation yeah. is a bitch. So, okay. temptation is a bitch. So, and so I hope this is like, hey, you know, if you, if you got a good program somewhere else, like go. Because yeah, I have California. a feeling that if Seth was doing as well as Levi, he would rather train back on the East Coast where he's from. One hundred percent. So, here's my fun hypothetical question. Ooh, I like one. hypotheticals. Mm. Ducati. Ooh. No, 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 no. So Kitchen keeps riding well. I think he's going to. I haven't seen anybody been. Uh, well, I guess I talk about Jet last year, but yeah. dominant. Yeah, dominant. I'll be honest with you. I don't. I think that he sweeps the rest of these West rounds. Probably. I'll just put that out there right I now. I won't argue that. So you have Kitchen continues to do well this year. Mm-hmm. We have the Fortner contract thing, and we have the Deegan situation, mm. and we have Anderson with one more year. And Prado coming over. And Prado coming over. Which one of those three gets that second spot behind Prado? I think they make a third. You're saying you think Kitchen's going to go 450? Yeah, Kitchen's out. After he wins. Kitchen's out after next. No, he's he's. Well, no, I mean, like, after he. He'll defend. Well, I I understand. But he's also saying whether he won or not, after next year, he wants to go 450. Yeah. Yeah. Period. So that, that thought is already out in the ether. And now, with what he's doing here, yes, if he wins, he'll defend next year and then go. So, I'll ask, which one of those three gets that spot? Well, there's a lot here because... <laughs> there's a, that's actually a very loaded question. It is, is but... Uh, uh, let, me, let, me, uh, let me unzip the zip here and unpack my suitcase. Why? <laughs> I'm unpacking my suitcase. Okay. Go ahead. Zip. Can you fucking grow up? <laughs> Can you grow up? Can you go? Be careful, so, he's going to redo the top button and then we have to start recording. Okay, stop! <laughs> Let me unpack the suitcase here. Okay. Uh, Deegan is obviously very wanted by the Big Green Claw, and the Big Green Claw wants the Deegan involved on a green bike. That is not a secret. It's been swirling. Every um, man, but them this time. Monster and Kawasaki specifically. The, the Japanese at Kawasaki want somebody to win again. And if they're making a push on watercraft and side-by-side, like I know they're going to be, um, Brian is a spokesperson for that. You know, look at his social media. He was riding a K&M jet ski the other day, tagging K&M, all that shit. Mm-hmm. So there's that part to it. Um, if you remember, Monster Energy wanted Chad Reed bad enough on that green bike. Yeah. That Monster Energy foot the bill for Chad Reed. And that was a debacle. But and, But what I'm saying is they made money. Oh, yeah. Made money Hand happen. Over fist, for sure. So it was Villapoto, Chad Reed, and I think Nick Way was the other guy that Yeah. Year. Yep. Um, so what I'm saying is if D, if they want Deegan bad enough, that's what they're going to make happen. But on the flip side of that, uh, Deegan's going to come first. It's the priority. Sorry to say it. Okay. He, he's the priority for everybody um, just because of everything else he brings besides results. Mm-hmm. Forget about racing. Everything else. Is everything else. But he's bringing results, too. Yeah. No doubt about it. The kid's a real deal. He's a favorite. He's a real deal. 
I don't know if he'll be like jet status, but he's gonna no. be. Yeah, but anyway. <laughs> Thank you. That's like the nicest thing you've said about Jet all year. Is Kitchen <laughs> is Kitchen going to want to go back and be around that clown show? I don't think so. I believe, because I think Levi is going to go to the 450 class before Deegan. I think that they kind of put Me the too. foot in their mouth with, the, oh, if we do this, we're going to go to the 450 class. I don't think the so. The age difference. I uh, think they're going in two years. If he continues to have his struggles, I think that they are too smart to do that to him. I think they're going. They know where, they know where the money and yeah, they, they're, they're, in the, they're going for. It. They know where they're the right. leverage is on deals. You like, really think Brian, if he's still struggling in the two fifty class, they will ruin his career and put him in the four fifty? Yeah, class. look how much he was struggling in the futures class, and they put him I mean, in. Yeah, but now it's like it's full time. You have no his choice once you go. Race before he went pro, he got fifth. Yeah, but you have no choice though. You bumped to the four fifty class. Like you're not going back to the two fifty class. I don't think they he wasn't going back to futures either. No. I think it's a little bit of a different conversation, guys. I, I think, think it's I, I think, think it's totally so. different. I think, I'll, I'll, I think they're business oriented enough to know the, where the money is at. Right now, they don't have separate deals. But for see, stuff, yeah, and if, the if only two fifty the t- they can go to is Honda. I wasn't, I wasn't, ar- I wasn't arguing any of that. Like my point was is is that I think that Levi will be on the four fifty first. Yep. I think that Levi is going to continue well, to win. We'll we'll see what happens in outdoors because I think that's going to be a little bit. Yeah, I mean, if he goes first and and he's but I on, think if he goes first and then Deegan comes after him, he's gone. He's going to go. But yeah. I think to answer your question, your original question, yeah. Levi will get that spot first. In my opinion, if he continues to win, he's going to get the spot first. And then if Deegan bumps up and they're like, hey, you know, if Levi's doing well, which I think that he will, he's going to go. Nope, I'm out. And then he'll leave. And as far as the Fortner thing goes, I have no information to back this up, but I truly believe that Austin is not going to take that 450 ride now. I think that that kid, this last, this last injury, he is really reevaluating his whole entire career of what he I wants think to he do. just needs to go to 450. I think start. he does, but I think just he needs restart. to separate himself from Cowie, and I think that I think Ryan Hughes is probably putting that in his ear as well. Put him on a club on Max Hometer, or a club on Max Yamaha. Dude, put him on something. Something else uh, other than He needs to get away from Kawasaki. He needs to get away from Kawasaki. He needs his restart. Uh, Star Yamaha, I don't think, is the vibe for nope. him. Nope, nope. Unless not they his... give him that bike and he can do his own program Tomac style. Nope, that's not his. Uh, yeah, that's not his. Um, um, I, I, the only other thing I could see him on is is maybe a Kawasaki, but not not under Mitch's awning. Or if Joe continues to have his woes at Honda. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. Um, Whoa, Joe. Joe, so, look, so, they're not going to pick up Forkner, though. They, they, Honda needs a guy that they can count on. Honda needs a guy that they can count on to be on the podium, not not a guy that they think's pretty good. Why'd they hire Joe, then? Well, <laughs> when, when he was I mean, Joe, yeah, Joe, yeah, yeah. Joe took Seth's ride at Geico because the Japanese wanted him on it. Where do you think Levi goes if he doesn't go to Cali? 450? Yeah. Well, I think you've got some he's, options coming. He's not doing Austrian. I'll tell you that. I, I, I think, yeah, unless the Austrian bike gets better with a new chassis, new model. Um, but you've got Triumph coming. You've got... Um, Ducati. Ducati. I don't know if they... You know, yeah. what they're, what they're going to want for a second-tier guy. Um, if he's winning a lot, though. Yeah, could be. Uh, he's not going to ride a beta. No, <laughs> fuck no. Um, he won't be. He won't be at Progressive Insurance Suzuki. It, it depends on you know if maybe Hep switches brand. Maybe they get some support from another brand. I've mean, heard rumors, but I've heard rumors for like two or three years now. I think so. the Triumph thing is actually a pretty good. Uh, but Savachi's going to go 450, and then who's the next? You know, and you'll and have a placeholder be there too. So yeah, I mean yeah. Triumph will do that. Uh, I have no reason why they wouldn't do three guys. So I don't know, man. I either. I think okay. he goes Troy Lee. <laughs> on the steel frame? Yep. I think he's not Austrian. I don't think he wants that Austrian. I don't think he wants any part of that I don't think Austrian. he has a fucking choice. I think if he, I think I if he, he wins, I, I, I would say that normally, but if he starts titles, winning, I think he's going to have a, the choice. He's going to have lot. leverage. We're talking about Fortner right now. Right? No, we're talking about Levi Kitchen. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, we're talking about Levi Kitchen. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. It, it was just an interesting thing when I was listening to the race review, and they started kind of putting this together with Levi moving up and stuff, and I'm like, oh, man, but the Deegan situation, too. And and then you throw in the Forkner contract, that whatever his promise there, isn't yeah. there. Yeah, so his promise I don't know. Is like a shot. That's it's, it. It's an interesting. It's an interesting conversation that we can continue to have, especially considering Levi's forward. doing what he's doing now. Yeah, and if he wins this Supercross title, which right now is, is looking pretty damn good. Yeah. yeah, and you want to know the fucked up thing about this is McAdoo very well might win a title on the other coast, but nobody is telling him he's gonna have a 450 ride. Nope. 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 Because he's also not 23, and you know. 
Yeah. I don't. I don't think Mac. You know, and it's heart. weird. They say nobody likes you when you're 23. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> crazy. This is a good time. Save that propane ceremony. <laughs> that, uh, like on one hand, you hate to see it happen to Forkner, and I used to not like him. I think he, I thought he was a rodent, but I think that he's earned his his respect with me now with all the grit, and I respect him for that. And you want to see him do well. But more than anything, for Kitchen and for McAdoo both, which I like both of them a lot. I picked both of them as a favorite earlier in the season on the show. But I want to see Mitch win so bad. So I think, bad. I think Levi has the West locked up. I still think it's a two-horse race between Tom and, and McAdoo. I think that that could go either way at this I point. Think the, I think the danger girl gets in there. No, man, he's too far back. He's 16 points back. He's going to get the saws all out and start chopping front ends off. Yeah, yep. it'll be close. Good. No, close good. Ah, man, I don't see that. I, I, think, I don't really I think agree he's with a, that. Honestly, he might get better. I'm not saying he's not going to. As the year finishes out here, just because he's he's supposedly. I'm not saying. I'm not, I'm not I'm not disagreeing with any of that. I mean, dude, we saw it in, in Indy. Like, yeah, he had cool. the flashes of, like, old Deegan from last mm-hmm. year. But I just go back on my point of when we did the reaction. Two of the next four rounds, the or two of the next rounds that he goes to are East West Shootout, and if he gets a bad start like he did in that last main, he's gotten yeah. a couple of times this year. He's not working his way through the pack like that. Yeah, I know. Well, and because uh, I think honestly, yeah. remember how I asked the question on the reaction when we were walking back to the hotel? Yeah. Like we don't really know which coast is better. Yeah. Now after watching Levi and and watching Joe, the way he was working it through the pack. I think that the West is better than the East. Well, I definitely think yeah. that Levi wins these shootouts that are coming up. I think you do. Uh, yeah, oh, yeah, I do too. Over RJ, even. Oh, yeah. yeah. He's, I would, he's I been would, kicking RJ's ass. I would love to say season. he's not yeah. even. He also got three starts. He's, he's good. That? He, he also got three starts. Yeah, but that's the problem, yeah. though. He gets three starts. It doesn't fucking matter. Not only does I he, agree with that all together. Not only does he get starts, man, like, he's yeah. not trying. Like, oh, he's not. Like, him winning that, and as easy as he did, it's, look like, at Seattle. it's like watching Jet when it's he's very not torpedoed. It's you like, know, oof. I go back to the people he's around, and yeah. watching that Triple Crown is very Roxton-esque. Recovery. Where he gets, thing. like, you know, second, third. Blood doping is awesome. Easy. Well, you get, uh, you get second or third or whatever on the start, and you just make those two passes early and go. Mm-hmm. I mean, Very Roxanish. Seattle yeah. was pretty evident of what happens when he tries a little bit for a few laps. <clears throat> you yeah. pull 20 <clears throat> seconds and mm-hmm. doesn't even look like. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I just, I, I'm not saying that I don't think Deegan has a shot to win because obviously, once again, Indy, there was that flashes. Mm-hmm. I'm just saying that if he gets a bad start, he's not coming through the pack and he's not going to get a podium. I yeah, just I don't uh, I don't see how that's possible. Like he's gonna have to. Everybody else is gonna have to because not only the East guys who mm-hmm. we know can beat him, but now you're factoring in RJ Smitty. You're factoring in Joe. Yeah, I, I also have the same question for Levi though. What's he gonna do with a start that's not good? He's been out front every time. I yeah. think Levi now has figured out how to be smart. I think that that will answer your is question. Is he turning down in the corner? No. Okay. <laughs> we'll see. We'll it's see. the same question we asked. I'm yeah. not comparing the two, but the same question we asked with Jet. Like, yeah. what would he? Once again, he's not Jet. But I think we've seen enough these last couple rounds with Levi that he he has finally tapped into something that we all thought he could do. Oh, the kitchen is cooking. He's cooking. We're so cooking speaking something. of cooking in the kitchen, I gotta ask this new trainer you guys are talking about the riffraff and and questionable things going on. So is it blood doping or HGH or what? Because neither of them are that big of a deal. Honestly. <laughs> Why don't you call Sexton and ask him what he's doing? Because he's not on a show right now, but you fuckers are. So what's look at the his deal neck. Here? What's the scoop? Uh, honestly, like. These guys are doing that kind of shit. Like the, I always go back to Sexton broke his collarbone his rookie year of his 450 season. And he says in an interview, yeah, I was hurt and I gained 10 pounds or some shit, right? Yeah. And we asked Coach about it. And Coach, without hesitation, goes, synthetic HH. Now, on the flip side of this, I don't give a shit. Because okay. I, can, I can do synthetic HGH and I'm not even going to make a main. Mm-hmm. You know, it doesn't really do that much for you. It just makes you he- he recover. Makes your recovery. Better. And, and and the way these guys are putting themselves in the ground, why not? Y'all ever watch that Icarus? Yeah, yeah, yeah I yeah, love I it. Started watching that the other night. I was but like, I think that there's other stuff that, once again, us oh, our, dopes our, are not our, smart enough. Where Coach Wood, there's other shit going on because once again, you can just look <laughs> at say, look how loose our sport is. Still. You can you can look at Chase. You can look at you can even look at AC. You can look at Jet. You can look at all these dudes. And go, yep, nope, I can definitely tell that there's some <laughs> shit going on. Yeah. I'm not. Yeah, I mean, you're going to tell me Tomac ain't involved with that? When yeah, his, when his I old, mean, man, when I his mean, old dude, man comes from the cycling every, world? Everybody, everybody, everybody at that level does it. I don't give a shit. Like, I've said for years, I've said for years shit. with sports, there should be a steroid league and a regular man's league. I don't really care about it. I'm just saying that, like, there's shit going on there, and everybody just needs to realize it happens and deal with it. 
So yeah. word on the street is just HGH or, or blood doping? Though? No, I think that there's more than that. Okay, that's what I was yeah, curious about. There's, there's a whole regimen of stuff, man. If you haven't watched, do you have Netflix? No. Uh, I was going to say, the Icarus documentary on there goes through this whole thing. With God, like, this is when Coach would need to be blood doping that. and stuff. They're talking about cycling. Okay. But all these guys, all these trainers come from cycling backgrounds. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they even, had one on the show this this uh, yeah. broadcast too. Yep. Yeah, even when even when you get to like oh yeah, Christian Vandeveld. Yeah, even when you get to like Jet and Hunter there with Johnny O'Mara, like Johnny O'Mara's got cycling background too. So, like, and a lot of them have motocross background where there's some gray area things coming. I mean, in, and also out, the like, guys right? with the train with Charles Dow. Yeah, all those. I mean, dude, it is what it is. Like. I know that people don't want to talk about it, but it is what it is. Like not, Stu, I mean, Ricky, Chad, all I'm those guys. Like I don't know. Yeah, like Ricky was the first guy to do it. Yeah. Stu did it for a Stu after he figured out Ricky was doing it. Stu started doing it. Chad, Chad did it. was like, oh, these guys. Oh, are these doing guys it. are doing it. All I'm, I'm going to hire it. Jeff Spencer, yeah, the same every, guy that trained Lance Armstrong. Everybody. I guess did. I better get a motorhome and drive it to the races so I can. go Yeah, back like every everybody does. Hundred percent. I don't really. Like who cares? You got a motorhome at the race? Something's going on. The people that have a problem with that shit, like you got to just kind of look yourself in the mirror and go, dude, this shit's been happening in our sport for a very long time. Putting it out in the ether by putting it out in the open and saying it's not that fucking mysterious, then it's not a big deal. Anymore. It's because the guys are soft. <laughs> I mean, anyway. if you're if you're on the juice getting loose, then whatever, dude. Yeah. Anyway, uh, Daniel Blair talked about it. He tried the juice and he said I was loose. I had more confidence. I killed it. Hopper did it. He said I had more confidence yeah, than ever. Like I've never he done steroids awesome. like that as an athlete, but uh, and I haven't also done. Uh, testosterone therapy, but I know a lot of guys that have, and that is a huge gain. Mm-hmm. Whereas steroids and HGH and blood doping aren't really that big of a job. No, dude, it just regenerates blood cells. Yeah. Testosterone, no. you start with a pussy and you end up with a tiger, though. There's a huge difference there. But the TRT thing is interesting, too, because if you do TRT, like, here's the thing. When you, you know get going down some path, I when, never when you get When you get in your 30s, like Roxon and them, they can do that without it being illegal right. because you're allowed to have a certain amount of testosterone in your body. And as you get older, we all know it doesn't produce as much. So, like, they can do a certain amount to get back to that level. I want somebody on SARMs. <laughs> Anyway, let's move on here. Uh, so, so Shimoda, anyway, Levi is cooking. Levi's Levi is cooking. cooking in the kitchen. I don't know what he's cooking, but he's cooking something. Shimoda goes two, three, three for second. Yeah. Oh, he was okay. second. Yeah, he was, he was good, man. Uh, it's just he was just he's, no, no. Wow, the two fifty class was boring. That's Sweet. what that's what's gonna happen in outdoors, man. He's yeah. gonna like start off on the struggle bus for the beginning, and then just slowly kind of do. He jumping. just doesn't look as. I don't know, loose or, or flowy on the hot. He he's, just looks stiff and tight, yeah. doesn't he? Yeah. I mean, dude, this it's is kind of just Joe's MO. It's not great. But I haven't heard that they're pissed at him yet. So, uh, well, Smith. I think they're at least going to give him a little bit of time. Benefit of the I think he is going to have to start. He's going to have to. He's been up and down. We all know Joe can win. He's yeah. proven it, even against the likes of Jet and all those guys. Like, he's done it before. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he won last year on the Pro Circuit bike. Yeah, I mean, did yeah, he won in 2022? Years, yeah. yeah. He's, he's eventually, though, going to have to start. He's going to have to win. Yeah. Oh, like, yeah. He's not going to just be able to ride out this contract and not no. win. They didn't hire him not to win a title. No. Uh, Smith goes three two three two four for third. Wasn't riding with a concussion. Yeah, it's amazing how it's great when you ride. What's great when you can hold your head up? Yeah, I think he uh, he tried to go with Kitchen in that second one and smoked himself. Mm-hmm. Oh, he did for 100%. sure, for sure. And he was like, 100%. I just can't hang with this dude. dude. Yep. Uh, RJ goes four four two. RJ is just he can't hang with him either. Let's go. He, for, he ain't got the speed. He's either. going four fifty next year. Oh yeah, good. He's gonna be opposite. Of I think Dylan. Pre- I think it'll be pretty good on four fifty. I mean, he's already I proven he can yeah. run it. Yeah. Wish we what. Dylan's going to be on the Dylan's factory Husky. Gonna be on, so the Husky route. Hang on. So Dylan and him. Where are you getting this information? I told you, man. I have one source that I go to, and he knows a lot of people, and he's been doing this for shit for a long time, but I don't like to talk about who that source is because I get good information. Give us a shmeemail, shmeer. You've ne- no, you've never heard of this person. You would not have any contact with this person. He's not in the industry right now as far as a name that everybody knows. He just has a lot of connections. He's a former Loretta Lynn's champion. But he's not somebody that you would know his okay, name. Okay, well, give me some other details here so I can guess. Uh, what class? <laughs> no, dude, just like 30-plus class. What year? Oh, so Brock Peterson. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Brock Peterson. Brock Peterson's my source, for sure. Oh, man. Oh, little another Greg Dur- great guy. Another little, great guy. Little Greg John Gruy is little his Greg, source. Yeah, little John Greg Dervage action. Is it yes. John Gruy? Yeah, it's John Gruy. I'll All right. That. Uh, it's Keith Johnson. Nate Thrasher goes 5.56 five, for fifth. Look Dude, at that, an average ride. For he, uh, I, I don't honestly, think he likes that probably win next week and then no, probably fucking no. die the week after. I'll tell you this. I, th- I think that it's very evident that his crashes are starting to creep into his mind. I think yeah. he just needs a change of scenery. Put, yes. put him on that Mitch Payton program that Kitchen just got. Yeah. He'd be great on that. I, I, I seriously mm-hmm. believe that, though. Like, you know, uh, Nate's one of my guys. I think that his crashes, like when the pace gets upped, 
I think with all of his crashes, especially last year, his brain goes off. He's mm-hmm. just like, I, I don't... Because there's too many times where he's running the front speed and then he'll make a mistake and somebody will catch him and you go, oh, all he's got to do is latch on to him. Yeah. And he just drops back. And I know he ain't getting tired because that's never been his issue. He just... I don't. I think his crashes scared the shit out of him. Yeah, I think he just needs to be on a new team, new surroundings. Yeah, well, you know that star team is not going to have nine thousand guys on it next year. So. And it, it's uh, it, what other manufacturer is going to step up and have more guys? Though, like you used to have Guy Honda with five, six guys. You used to have. Pro used to have like, quite a bit. That's what I mean. Like that's running out now. Yeah. Where are these yeah. guys going to go? Well, not Austrian know. brands. Uh, March Banks. Right. March Banks mm-hmm. doesn't get a start at all. Goes nine six five for six. Probably is pretty on like four fifty at this point. Maybe. Uh, he's big, right? He's a, he's a tall guy? Yeah, he's big. No, he's big a man-child. Boy. Yeah. Big boy. Uh, Julian Bobert. Oh, okay. Go six, eight, Let's talk about seven. Juju for a second. Hey, I like the fight seven. in that first moto. Did you, uh, y'all heard the same thing that was talked about on the St. Louis thing and a that, couple other people that, that Kate is not happy with him? What the fuck is up with I that? Don't know. I don't What gotta, are they not happy There's with? rumors I'm, that they're like. I don't know. I'm going to reach out and see what I can find out here. So it was can it only be in Fire, your fire off a message to that guy. There's, and ask him me, if it's I'm true. trying to have a nice conversation with that guy instead of just being like, hey, do you know this? Hey, do you know that? Hey, hey, hey. It was Steve that talked about this, right? I fired off a text. It was Saturday it was night. Steve that I think brought somebody. Yeah. yeah, Steve brought this yeah. up, but there's also rumors that like KTM is not super stoked on his I results. Under, I don't. Why? They said that results blue. in your rookie year it can't. Be no, results, it's so it's results. It They're has not. to be a culture thing because if you're a fucking rookie in the 250 class, my thing, thing is my thing is is I don't understand. Well, they shit all over Max Volen. This is Max Volen all over you again. You know, 18 months ago, this kid was an unknown. He's in, on a stock and Yamaha. On Saturday night, he's literally battling with Levi for the lead. Maybe it's so maybe it's they don't like Davy. Maybe it's like they don't like Davy. Davies is trainer. That could be that. That might be a thing. I mean, yeah, Davies is trainer. His fucking mouth. All oh, I know God, is, <laughs> all I all I know is, is that when I heard that, I'm like, you got to be shitting me. I, like, that, if this is a Max Bowen thing back. all over again, here's the problem. Opposite of Tom, we know Tom's going to continue to be great, do his thing, yeah, probably going to win thing. some titles. Thank okay, you. whatever. But outside of him, KTM right now has one dude as an amateur that they're even like developing, and that's Luke Fowser, and that kid is years away from being in the. A-class. This is the stupid shit, though. <laughs> That the that the pure mobility group does. I, I mean, I, I was going to bring this up when we got to him. Talon Hawkins was not even supposed to ride pro last year. No, he got screwed. And then they put those expectations. And then, they and then you him. look at what fucking is happening with Casey Cochran. Do you think Casey Cochran's going ro- to have a factory no, he, ride next he year? Was supposed to, he was supposed to make his debut like weeks ago. He was supposed to debut and guess what keeps happening to and him? got screwed, and now he's getting beat. How do you think his confidence is? He's going to be in the same spot Hawkins is on an AEO, KTM, or AJ, Which is a bummer whatever. because that kid has a lot of talent. Yeah. You, th- you guys think that it was bad for Cochran not to move up? Yeah. 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 Because he, he, would, dude, cause he, he was went from winning to. to not winning now, and not not and not. Well, so Cochran was in that race the other night. That's the that's point. Exactly the point. He's uh, been the last two futures. That Landon Gibson guy was. A, yeah, and Landon Gibson's like fourteen, just turning fifteen. Yeah. Those and he's, be- race. And he's are, beating uh, Cochran's ass. They are signing that Davies kid. The Cole Davies kid. Mm-hmm. Okay, is is it Gas Gas or is it KTM? I don't know which one, but they are going because that's it. the only thing that came to mind. Is I was like, oh, you might as well sign Cole Davies. Here's the problem. Uh, yeah, and he deserves let's it. Let's put he's these. Uh, yeah, let's put these expectations on these he, guys right he, off the rip. He, yeah, he deserves it. Here's the problem. I don't think he's that good of an outdoor rider. Probably not. And we know that KTM, if they're doing this to Juju after how many rounds. You're gonna have to be able to ride not just supercross. You have to ride outdoors, and I, I don't, I don't know this because I've never seen Cole Davies ride outdoors, but I don't think he's an, uh, he's an outdoor specialist. So if like you're doing well in supercross, but you're getting fifteenth outdoors, KTM will boot him too. I just, I just wonder like what's the plan? Like, or like they what's, no what's the like, idea? What are they expecting? Because like you don't Wind, have anybody. Apparently. You don't have anybody in the ch- in the chamber. You don't have anybody, and that bike is dog shit. Who are you gonna sign? And it's and it's very unfair too that if they're if they're gauging all of this on what Tom's doing, like dude, you're not gonna find anybody that's Tom gonna is go. A world champion. Exactly. You you're you're not gonna of gauge that. off of him, especially seventeen year old kid that probably didn't even have any expectation of going pro at all. This is so. this is where it gets mucky. Where. KTM should have not taken the stuff in house because the problem is is that they did it when they had really good guys and now you don't have anybody really good because you don't have an offshoot team. No, and I mean, dude, like the whole the whole Austrian umbrella, like Ryder D's having his issues. Pierce Brown all of a sudden is having his best year ever without actually winning a race, but like Pierce unfortunately will do Pierce things at some point. Guillaume Ferez is out, and I hope that he makes it back at some point this year. Casey Cochran's got his issues. RJ's doing well, but we also know that you talk about with the Cowie boys, the other shoe's gonna drop. The other shoe's gonna drop at some yeah. point. And outside of Tom, 
like Juju's doing fine. He's led laps. He's mm-hmm. Like what him. do you want? What do you want from the kid? So like if they bounce him like a Max Volan deal, dude, I'm sorry. I have the utmost respect for Roger and Ian, but what the fuck are you guys doing? I, th- I, I think it's coming yeah. from above them though. Even if it there's is, only like a what few are people. You doing? There's what only is the a plan. No, there's only a, Roger, yeah. there's only a few people. The oh, only person, 100%. somebody over in Austria. Yeah. The only the only person as far as like the racing side that's not from the actual manufacturer that actually has a higher title than Roger is Pitt Buyer, and I don't really think he gives a total shit about what goes on over here. My, I mean, like I said, my question is: is what is the plan? And on top of that, you've got a kid from Havasu who <laughs> has rode the jet ski kid, grew up racing right? jet skis. Yeah, who, who's rode. You know, six mud races. Like, what do you expect out of him? Mm. Like, if you do this as a normal year where we don't have this many mud races, he probably does a lot better. If they honestly expected Juju to go out and get podiums with this coast, they're high as shit. Which he was unknown. Literally last year in Futures A2, he was on a blue crew. And let's be real. The only reason we even knew who he was is because somehow he went out and was faster than Deegan. And not a star racing blue crew. A blue crew, a blue stock crew. Yamaha yeah. with Ben triple so, clamps so and bar I just mounts. don't get like I'm with you. When I heard that, I was like, "What in the fuck are we doing?" Like, if they honestly thought going into the year that he was going to be better than RJ, Levi, Joe, Nate, and Smitty, like, what are you guys? What are you guys doing? Know. I don't know. It's this just... ties right back to the beginning of the show when we were talking about how you, just because you don't win doesn't mean you did shitty, right? Yeah. I think Juju's doing great. I think yeah, he is. Too. I, I, I've said, like, God, dang, I've said multiple times on the show that I think Juju is going to have a great career. But, yeah. dude, if they bounce him away this early, dude, you're going to ruin this kid. It yeah. can't be because of results. I can't accept I hope. I hope not, man. But that's everything that they're saying. But we all know that they don't tell the whole truth. But if it is, dude... I don't, I don't and know what's saying that. Is that Davies saying that? Fucking running his mouth. No, Dave. Davies you know? actually Juju's like da- da- Davies Davies Juju's trainer. trainer, right? Him. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. No, I I don't know what it is, but if anybody's just say, oh, the team is this and that, it's gonna be Davies. If Juju awesome. gets bounced, if he gets bounced, God, you hate Davies like he hates Joe. Joe. I don't hate him, but I where's I Juju gonna go? Good like an AEO or, or something. Or? I think the kid is too damn good. Like to go. No offense to like AEO or AJ or whatever, but like if he gets kicked from KTM, like he's got to end up on another factory ride. He deserves but, it. But what I'm saying is there are there aren't star. many factory rides anymore. Go to Star. Yeah. Go to Star. Go Star. Go to Star. Oh, cool. Like, star will fucking 800 different. Yeah, man. Go Star. Star will pick him up. I think he's a great fit. Uh, with our, with our our good old boys over at Charlie, I think he's a great fit there. I don't I don't. Yeah, but he's still on that Austrian. I don't bike. want him on the Austrian umbrella at that point, man. I mean, I don't really give a shit about that. To be one hundred percent honest with you, and if I got Will Hahn as my manager, yeah, he and Davey get along just fine. Yeah. I don't know. I heard that, and I was just like, that was. Yeah. I was like, you gotta be shitting me. All right, uh, Ryder D goes seven seven twelve for eight. Okay. Perfect example of what happens when you go to the Austrian branch. <laughs> <laughs> just kind of having an up and down year, man. Like this is just kind of where Ryder D. I, this is honestly for me where Ryder D was gonna be at, after it. all this time. I thought he's gonna be a lot better. He got podiums and flashes of brilliance on the Cowie at the end of the year last year. So. I mean, if you ask the Cowie boys, they're like, oh, he's great. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, he, Mumphy, they shit on him. Mumphy, they shit on him. Mumphy goes twelve ten nine for ninth. He's looking saucy he, in practice. Yeah, what's yeah. up? That's weird. So supposedly, he has factory parts. No, <laughs> uh, the guy that supposedly the H-H. guy that they wanted to build the motors when he was on Michael Lindsay's team is now building the motors for them because Tony Alessi did Tony Alessi things. Who is it? Varner? No, I can't remember Kibbe? the name. I don't remember the name. Was he a former fa- was he a former I, factory I, connection guy? Keep you asking two me questions. Good I don't. Right there. Kibby's no. awesome. XBR. Kibby's the man. Chad, Chad at XBR. I don't think that was it either. Uh, well, uh, XBR uh, does uh, the Brady motor. Becker at Fast Core Mods. No, they <laughs> did you just say Brady Becker? They talk about they talk about it in the Gizmo review, Mods. So. You, you get both of our own Fast Core Mods. I had a Fast Core bike. That's supposedly the thing. Is he now has a motor if they like? So Ron no. Hemp. We'll see. No, that wasn't Ron Hemp is not alive. Uh all right. Uh rest in peace. What Fucking a great guy! This dickhead over here. Uh, I didn't you know walk into him. A, you I walk just... into Ron's little shop, and it's a, you can barely walk through there, but it just smells like Folgers coffee, and the guy's making horsepower. Oh, that dude he used to make a lot of horsepower. Dude. That's for damn sure. All right, uh, Talon Hawkins goes ten, twelve, ten through the LCQ for tenth. Yeah, Anthony Bourdon goes eleven, 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 four, eleven. Just bleach continue... hair, he sold out. Yep, <laughs> just continuing <laughs> to bleach hair, you're so loud. Just continuing <laughs> to just like what the hell. Yep. 
Uh, Phil goes 22-9-8 for 12th. Yelling at his team. Just it, jump the jumps. It was the throttle body for sure. Guaranteed. Uh, it was electrical. Hunter Yoder goes 14-16-15 for 13th. Devin Simonson races the 250 class because it would, be e- yeah. it would be easier to make the ma- in, in the 250s than the 450s. So he borrowed a 250 to race 250s Who? this weekend. Devin Simonson. Oh. 16-15-16 for 14th. Cole Thompson goes 21 14 13 for 15. Definitely didn't hold Phil up. Yep. Wageman 13 22 14 for 16. Not bad. Max Miller 15 13 21 <laughs> for 17. Oh, here's another fun one. Michael Moseman goes 8 21 22 for 18. Moseman doing Moseman things, but good thing we signed uh, him to do a two year deal. I think he got landed on that. I don't right? know. They, good thing we signed him to do a two year deal. He crashed it. Okay. That he practice crashed crash in, was pretty good. He crashed in practice, too. They didn't think he was going to race. Good thing we signed him to do a two year deal. As I said, the Michael Moseman experiment failed. I know I he's got a multi year deal. He's making like $15 an hour. I bet he's making bonuses only. I bet he's going to go to Paula and probably end up second in practice and then yard sale in the first moto. Jaron Stapleton, 17-20-17 for 19th. Fariz goes 20-17-18 for 20th. Maddie Jorgensen goes 19-18-19 for 21st. And Lux Turner goes 18-19-20th for 22nd. Lux Turner, cool name. I've said it, and I'll say it again. I don't pay attention to these guys without Paul Pumek's no. fantasy. It kind of fucking sucks. Once I got below, like, Phil, I was like, eh, okay. Yeah, I'm like, and then I'm thinking Max Miller, dude. He's a main event guy every round this year. I'll yeah. be picking him. I think the problem is that a lot of these dudes, like, they're obviously bad dudes on a supercross track, but there's a really huge disparity these days from the privateers compared to everybody in the top ten, and like, you just you're not really paying attention to them. Like, you don't notice them. Yeah. 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 And also, like, you know, we don't see a lot of them even during the week because like videos don't really exist anymore outside of like Insta bangers. Yeah. Whereas, like, you'd always used to catch videos of, like, these guys at the practice tracks, and now you got to go searching for that shit. Now their chick just filmed them. Yeah, yeah I mean, you know, whatever. There's something to be said about that. There, there All right. Uh, that's been your 250 Race Recap, brought to you by our friends at 50 Graphics. 15% off. Link in the description down below. Check them out. Two weeks. Build me a lean to, then. Hey, you that's guys want to hear the most exciting news I heard all weekend? What? Let's hear it. Tony Alessi is pregnant again. With Sunset Diamond? With... Who the fuck is Sunset Diamond? Oh, just wait until the camera's clear. And they're going to have a boy. Cool. Really? Oh, you're not lying. I'm not. Oh, he's joking. having another kid. All right, I'm not going to go I'm not going to go touching the kid. I'm not going to fuck with And they're anything. having a, they're ha- they're having a boy. I'm not going to I can't are you wait guys, for another. Are you guys ready for some more believe the hype here? I'm going to t- ready. Look, man, I I can't in good conscience say anything about that family as far as kids are concerned. In 14 years here, when I'm in oh, damn near 50, god, I cannot wait for the believe the hype shirt. Can I, so, can this I, is Tony Oh boy, here we go. You know what? Let me wrap up the show before you do some dumb shit some on camera. I'll, I'll, okay. be, All right, go ahead. I'll be First and foremost, while we're talking about Alessi's boy, when when I was at, oh, wow, so I'm about nice. the same age as Mike, and that's when we time. were kind of coming up, that whole believe the hype thing and all that, that really? came along with that. All the murky things with the Alessi's, we were all like, "This is lame. Get this fucking guys out of here." That's his wife. But after they're both done racing, no way. I have learned so much from Tony Alessi. No that way. That guy is a wealth of information. He is. He, I'm not saying is he really, his morale. Is he really his wife. Uh, his morality what? is awesome. Maybe it How is, maybe it's not. Her? I don't know. Oh, I guess I But as I far as like me learning things second. from people, I learn a lot from Tony Lassie. Now, <laughs> something I want to bring up while before it leaves my head with the rain above, we just heard some thunder and lightning things. Now, with the Texas situation, I'm sure you're aware, uh, with the guy getting struck by lightning during a race. Oh, yeah, that's fucked. Uh, did he make it? I don't know. I don't have a minute for Wait, wait what? A so guy bad. was racing and he got oh, struck by lightning. Oh, it would have been Freestone, Freestone? probably. Yeah. Like, yeah, the, was, like at the national? Yeah. Amateur. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Middle of the race. Holy shit. You want to talk about a track though? This is kind of off topic, yeah, it but went it's through a shoulder and out of it. Uh you know who's going through a lot of like bad press, I guess you could say, is Glenn Helen right now. Why? They deserve it. Dude, Glenn Helen, like it literally seems like every three months they're losing a rider during their practice days. Wow. Well, that's because it's dangerous as fuck. We well, yeah, I put nine hundred people. This. Put nine hundred people on the track at once. Quads with fifties yeah. and four fifties. I've ridden Glen Helen a lot, and I've never seen it like that where they're where they're combined together. It's always been split for me. But the track Not these itself. Days. Well, it may be true. I don't know that true. No. Uh, it took uh, Anderson and. Uh, <laughs> Anderson in this day is still here. Well, Anderson that. and Mil, uh, not Millsaps, but Dino out a lapper. Yeah. Yeah. Where mm. I was ruining their seasons. Where, oh. where I was going with the Glen Helen thing is, is that the when it left, when the AMA National Circuit left Glen Helen and didn't come back, 
I was happy. Yeah. Because the side of the track on Glen Helen is fucking deadly. And when you're on that edge and you have one little whoops, yeah. you're dead. You're dead. Now, I came, I was going up Mount St. Helen and I was on a borrowed 450. And I'm coming down Mount St. Helen and I have one little whoop. And all of a sudden, you're fourth gear wide open coming down a mountain. And the, the, the whoops coming down it are like three foot tall. Yeah. So you're like, I hope I don't die right now. I don't love thinking about that when I'm no. riding. Nope. Uh, last thing I'll say, though, and I don't know if you guys have seen this. I don't even know. But, yeah, they definitely wouldn't have talked about this. Uh, I think it's Paula. Yeah. Do you say in Paula or Paula? Paula. Like, like my neighbor's is... wife's name is Paula. Paula. <laughs> Paula. Paula Paula. Uh, I think it's... T- yeah, Fox Raceway. Yeah, I'll, always, I'll always call it Paula from the old days, whatever. People Paula? Still, whatever. You got a little Indian in you, do yeah. you? No, uh, Filipino. Um, He's Korean. Is he? Whatever. Different. No, not the same. He's Korean. Um, I think it's two weeks before the opener. <laughs> Apparently, they are doing stopwatch nationals. Yep. Stopwatch Nationals. They're literally calling it. They're literally st- calling it that. Stopwatch Nationals. Amazing. They're at, at, at Fox Raceway. <laughs> two weeks. Two weeks. I think it's two. It's either two. It's got to be two weeks. So probably the the off weekend. They're doing Stopwatch okay. Nationals, but they're literally doing it as an event and not just calling it that. That they're, is awesome. They're inviting Ten or fifteen grand. Yeah, they're inviting everybody out doing the Stopwatch Nationals, and I was like, "Fuck yeah!" So whoever has the fastest lap time, and I do. They're making it like I don't. I think they're still ironing out the details of it, but like, yeah, like dude, they're because the, I mean, we all talk about Stopwatch Nationals before the Nationals, like who's doing what, but it's always it's a secret. It's a secret. They're like, nope, not a secret anymore. We're gonna do it. For the fans, it's very normal for, and the reason they call them stop stop watching nationals is because out in SoCal, every day there's a different track and everybody's there. Mm-hmm. So I think Glen Helen, I forget it was Wednesdays and Palo was Tuesdays and Thursdays or something, but whatever. Every time you go to the track out there, there's all those mm-hmm. teams, right? And they're already doing it, so now they kind of made an event out of it. I think it's awesome. And it's cool, dude. If I lived in SoCal. That would, I would be like, I'm going all about it now. Because now they're making like a big deal about it. Like, yeah. oh, this is an event. I like it. I, I, I couldn't awesome. remember when we first started this, if it was Pala or if it was Glen Helen. I'm glad it's not Glen Helen because I'm not a huge fan of that place. Although it is awesome. <laughs> uh, but for me, I, I like that it takes something that was already kind of going on and it helps it grow. Making a, Yeah, you're making legitimate. I don't know. I, thought, I, I heard that and I'm like, that is badass. I also, cool. I also didn't know that the Indians own Pala. Yeah, the Indian Reservation. I didn't know that that was the deal. Yeah. Look, yeah. man, let's go back to Lake Elsinore. That's why the casino's there, too. Yeah, let's get some Indian taxes going on for that. Uh, okay. already. All, right. Well, well, All right, well, well that's done anyway. with that. All right, so this has been uh, episode 266, our St. Louis wrap-up. Thank you for everyone who made it all the way through all of our blabbering to here. We talk uh, a lot of shit on this show, but yeah, you guys love it. We sure do. Uh, thanks oh. all. <laughs> all right. Get the fuck out of here. Thanks to all our sponsors. <laughs> that was the oh weirdest thing ever. 50 Graphics, Complete <laughs> wow. Racing Solutions, wait. TLR Coatings, ProFlow, Gutterworks, Isaac Nelson Designs. Thank you, everyone. Links in the description down below. We're off next week. We yeah. are off. Yeah, I have yeah. videos loaded, and I'll have plenty of videos from this one, too. Original content, nice. too. Clip or, my rant about the GoPro. Original content, too. What kind of, did you film something? No, you're going to have original content. <laughs> What kind of original content? Like you said, videos. They're original content. The wow. Oh. Oh, my God. Uh, it's late. All right. Sorry, guys. Thanks, we, everybody. Yeah. We'll, we'll see you in Bye. two weeks. Later. Bye.